Hello and welcome back to my channel. Deku Fanfic join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the third part of our series, What If Deku Met His Multiple Versions. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is DemonHeart12 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. 10th Universe. Hashtag TO anyone who's watching Demon Slayer from the anime. Please don't read this chapter since there are spoilers hash. Well, I have to admit that this is awesome. Tanjiro cheered on given it was the most exciting thing he did for a very long time. But in all honesty, I kinda like this world. I mean it's good that the Hashira have some kind of balancing factor or someone who can keep the more extra elements in check and this also increased the chances of fewer people dying through the final fight with Musen given the extra hand. Kano's eyes widened as she knew she needed to ask something later on. Discord nodded his head, I won't say keep them in check, but more like help them understand different points of view, and you are right regarding the final fight. Less Hashira died this time around, he noticed Michikatsu's look as he addressed him, he didn't die against you in your fight, but he died against Musen in the end. The man frowned, but at least his grandchild didn't die by his hands this time around. Does my sister survive her fight? Tano asked hoping for the best, so Discord answered, in this one, yes she did, but it was only this world. You need to understand something that each case has different settings. In this world, she and Izuku made a very different yet similar plan to your sister's version, in essence. They planned to hit Tama with a poison so strong that he won't even feel it flowing through his body or feel it destroying his regeneration as they kept him busy with fighting, and when he realized it, it would be already too late. He tapped his chin, but then again, all I said, it all comes down to what plays out. Plus, in that world, some heroes aided in the raid, a lot of them died, some got permanent injuries, and someone tried to foolishly apprehend Musen and take him to HSPC for questioning. And I can personally assure you that the HSPC or reformed HSPC wanted anything but to question the Demon King. Momo asked, where are you talking about? And who is Tama? And why would Zuzu and his fiancé of that world want him dead this much? And who's the idiot who thought he can take out the Demon King? Discord replied, wow, lots of questions, but they are reasonable, so let's begin from the end. The idiot is Mirio, the blonde wasn't shocked, and he was the idiot for having the power to kill Musen but didn't because of two things, first, he lacked the will to do so, and second, he believed All Might's delusions about demons, he actually believed that if he captured Musen, he'll force the man to give him the way of turning demons back into people or force him to relinquish his control over them. He was so confident that he literally turned his back on the down man which caused him greatly, and believe me when I say death would have been much better than what happened to the poor guy next. Mirio was biting his nails, what happened to me that's worse than death. Did I become a demon and attack everyone else? He looked up at Discord who gave him a blank look. The Chaos Master replied, that would be spoiling the fun that comes further down the line. This made Mirio faceplant on the ground, but Discord carried on like business as usual. As for the why, the who, and the what, you see the man was the demon that killed Izuku's master and Shinobu's older sister, Kani Kacho. Both of them spent years planning out his demise, though the woman could have been saved since they managed to get her to a hospital. Well, he bit on his fist, the hospital refused to help them given that Kani like Izuku and Shinobu was quirkless and their literal reply was we can't waste our resources on someone useless, we have much more important things to do. As they took in her place a hero's son with a dislocated shoulder, this only served to further fan the flames of hatred in Izuku's heart against heroes given that Izuku saw the woman like an older sister for him. All Might clenched his head, oh dear, goodness. They refused to give her treatment. No wonder young Midoriya in that world hates heroes. Discord added, believe me, that was one of the many reasons why he hates heroes. There's a lot more, and you're one of them. Let's say, your little talk happened much earlier and in a crowded place. The man gulped. Nezu's eyebrows twitched from hearing this as he asked, if you don't mind asking, how did Midoriya convince his mother to allow him to go after such a dangerous profession? Given what I have seen, she's already worried as she is, regarding his current choice of career. I can't imagine her accepting such a thing unless she isn't in the picture altogether. The woman was shocked by such a notion but then remembered that she might have died in this world. Discord was uncomfortable answering this. Let's just say that not all Inkas are good mothers, and this one is one of them. The woman fell over as she just heard she was a bad mother. Izuku said, well, I want to say I'm surprised regarding this, but from what I heard, I have to say I expected this. Tanjiro did tell me that most demon slayers came from households that suffered abuse, abandonment, or death, but still, I can't imagine a world where my mom is a bad person or abusive to me. Discord shrugged, it is what it is my good friend. I mean in my world my mom went to be a supermodel with Auntie Mitsuki, and I healed people with blindness and other shit so much that people thought that I was a deity. He then caused Ibarra to float, it took me three weeks to convince her that I'm not the second coming of Christ after she saw me heal someone who was blind. The girl blushed as she hid in Izuku. Alright people, more questions, Discord said, hit me with it. Ajiro asked, does Izuku meet us at any point or are the heroes that helped him just a bunch of ragtag heroes? 
A very good question I have to say from someone who has mostly forgotten more than the invisible girl. The tailed boy fell over from the harsh yet very accurate insult directed toward him. Yes, he knew a few of you in the beginning mostly the underground heroes of your class and had a very good relation with Shinso who respected him very much and the dedication he put into his work. The others had a good relationship with him, but Toru did have a slight scare when she got too close to Izuku for her own well-being. Kano chuckled a little bit. Yeah, my sister can be a little bit intense sometimes when she feels threatened and annoyed. Toru merely nodded her head as she shivered. Discord laughed a little bit as he said, but he did meet the rest beginning with someone he wished he never saw again in his entire life, Bakugo, and after that, he was meeting other members of one of whether be it by chance or other events. Tanjiro looked at the spiky-haired boy and back at Izuku, why wouldn't want to meet him? I mean they seem like good friends to me from what I saw. Discord shook his head, it's a very complicated relationship, but in that world, Bakugo was actively looking for him since he disappeared one day from school. He clapped his hands, all right Mini-Me, what do you think? After this is for my own amusement, and your personal torture. Izuku merely flipped him off as Ibarra chastised him which he might start doing since the girl is at an impressionable age. Well, I have to admit that it was weird, to say the least, but it seems that I'm quite different from here. I mean I love heroes, but there I hate them. I also seem more confident. I have to say that this version of myself is the closest thing to being a quirkless hero, but given how this works, I might find a version of myself who used breathing styles and is in a hero school. Discord gave him a thumbs up. Yes sir, you'll see a lot of worlds where you use breathing styles or where you are a reincarnation of one of those three or the other two that just left us. Tanjiro and Kano at the mere thought of Musen being reincarnated after all the sacrifices made to defeat him. Izuku on the other hand, didn't know how to feel regarding that he might be a reincarnation of a girl, it seemed a little awkward. Okay, let's move on before some of us have war flashbacks. Discord spun the wheel which he now called the Wheel of Eternal Embarrassment making Izuku's eyebrow twitch while Bakugo laughed till he fell over. The wheel finally stopped on something that made Discord smile, the shape-shifting hero. Yes finally, I've been waiting forever for this. Izuku lifted his eyebrow, so in this world, I have some type of shape-shifting quirk. Is it similar to Togo or is it animal-related? Discord shook his head making Izuku ask, well, what is it? Discord smiled, you'll see. It's better than any quirk. You literally have the power of a god between your hands. You can destroy everything with a flick of your fingers. Now everyone was intrigued regarding what kind of power he had, but what I can tell you, the power is literally on your wrist and you're quirkless as they get. Izuku was shocked. Nezu was laughing evilly scaring everyone from his world but giving chills to their guests. Mina was running in the forest in the training camp. She had to admit that she wished she failed her final exam. She might have been safe with the other people and wouldn't be here in a forest filled with fire and poisonous gas. She then heard footsteps coming near her. The girl froze as the newcomer appeared. A monster wouldn't give it justice. Tanjiro's eyes bulged out, I thought you guys didn't have demons like us. Izuku shook his head telling him, we don't. That thing used to be a human, but AFO happened to it. AFO coughed, Kamado meet the Namu. They were humans, but I artificially bioengineered them to become mindless killing machines to do my bidding, but further down the line they became more smart and complex, but they remained only battle-hungry machines. Tanjiro and Kano shivered as AFO gave them the same feeling Musen did, but Mina jumped happily, hey, I'm on the screen. This is so cool. She then whispered quietly, I must be the lucky girl this time around. This is great. The girl froze in her place as the chainsaw Namu looked down at her. It lifted its arm and swung it down. The girl waited for the pain, but it never came. She dared to open her eyes and looked only to see what looked like Frankenstein's monster holding the Namu's hand. The monster said, Hey ugly, why don't you pick on someone your own size? The girl then noticed the symbol on the monster's chest and breathed a sigh of relief. He was one of the Glass Watch vigilantes, a group of highly trained mutants quirked people who fought villains. This one if she remembered correctly was named Frankenstrike, it was in her opinion a lame play on Frankenstein and Lightning Strike. Izuku whistled, wow, I'm huge. Hum, I'd see why I would be a vigilante. Mutant heroes aren't necessarily well accepted sadly. I hope this changes further on. Shoji and Takoyami gave him a thumb ups with Mina, Tsuyu, Toru, and Pony smiling. Nezu smiled, I think that young Midoriya is extremely smart in this world given he fooled everyone to think that he's a group of vigilantes inside of a single person. Ibarra replied, it would appear so, but I guess that the symbol has some type of relation with his powers. Let's see what type of powers he might have later on. Discord smiled, oh, believe me when I say that both the combined power of FO and overhaul doesn't stand a candle to Izuku's full potential in that world. He literally needs a flick of his fingers to wipe them out of the pages of history. Mina smiled as she stood and ran away saying, take care of him, Frankie. Frankenstrike looked back at her and said, some hero in training, lend me a hand, will ya? Mina froze as she lowered her head in shame, I'm sorry for not helping you, Izubabe. Izuku only waved his hand saying, look at it this way, you were stuck between two titans fighting each other. It would be insanity to interfere in their fight. I'm sure I won't hold it against you. It was long after the disastrous training camp. 
No one was severely harmed and the villains failed their objective. They weren't able to kidnap anyone and some of them were captured for all their efforts such as Muscular who was found charred and barely clinging to life. Kota set a giant released laser beams from his shoulders and defeated him. Moonfish was encased in diamonds courtesy of the Vigilante Diamond. Mustard who was taken out by sleeping gas from Gutrot. Mr. Compress who was frozen. And finally Mange who was tied up in the trees with vines. But there was something positive. Dot 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 the heroes managed to get a lead on the vigilantes or as they now think one vigilante. Ragdoll after being freed from Mr. Compress kept a tag on the vigilante and realized that one of them was there. But multiple members of them appear causing her to theorize that vigilantes were actually one vigilante with the ability to shapeshift. Nezu shook his head, such a shame, young Midoriya. You let your guard down, and underestimated Ragdoll causing your own downfall. Discord shook his head, no not really. He thought Ragdoll was out cold so he didn't think too much about it. I have to give it to her since she fooled him even though he trained his senses to tell if someone was actually out cold or not, but he was in a hurry. Izuku facepalmed as Itsuka said, Don't feel bad, Izuku. I know that you only meant well. Aizawa frowned, Let me guess, we're going to fight him, and I'm their secret weapon. And I will be shocked that my quirk is nothing special against him. Discord nodded his head as the man said, We should seriously start looking at our opponents so we can't be taken by surprise. Right now, heroes such as the Top 10, Eraserhead, and many more were scouting out a regular-looking warehouse. The nighttime hero said, All right, you know the program. We came here to make the vigilante submit. From what we saw, he has powers that can walk all over us, but that doesn't mean we're on the losing end. That's why I came to neutralize his abilities. Endeavor scoffed, I say we just walk in and take him by surprise. Then we chuck him into prison. Hawk smiled as he poked, Are you still sore that the vigilante absorbed your flames more than once only to use them against you? Or is it the time that he froze you solid in front of people? The flame hero exploded into flames as he glared at Hawks. All my cuffed, all right, let's calm down. We need to apprehend the vigilante and turn him to our side. If we take him out, it will cause about 6% of crime to rise again. Izuku whistled, wow, that's some serious firepower if I can beat Endeavor. It must be unique. Tanjiro thought about it for a moment. The nearest thing I could think of having abilities like that is Musin, but even he couldn't reshape the world as you said. Mina said, at this point, I feel that he has alien powers. Imagine that, it would be so awesome. People living in outer space, each alien having his own set of powers. It feels so cool and amazing. I wish something similar like this happens to us. Kano asked her, if they lived in outer space, how will they breathe? I'm not sure there's air there. The alien-themed heroine blinked for a moment, I don't know, but I'm sure that some don't need to breathe air. I mean look at us. I might as well be a demon from your world at this point. The girl laughed before remembering that she would be killed if that was true. Michikatsu shook his head, be careful what you say. Believe me, if you were, you wouldn't be shown mercy. Your head will fall faster than you can blink. The girl gulped and nodded. Nezu's voice came through a speaker and said, All right, headshot begin your infiltration of his base. The hero became thin as a string as he slipped through ventilation pipes and entered what seemed the main hall and saw two people sitting there. One was a boy with green curly hair and emerald eyes and the other was a green-haired mutant girl with frog-like features. The hero reported back, It seems that they are two people a girl with a frog mutation and a boy with some kind of watch on his wrist. It also holds the vigilante symbol. Do you think he's the one we're looking for? He then heard them talking as he said, They're talking. I'll open a comm so you can hear what they're saying. Aizawa looked at Tsuyu who titled her head in curiosity, I wouldn't have expected you of all people to hide a vigilante. I expected better of you, Asui. He stopped for a moment, or what will my version say to you? The girl looked at him, Well, it's true that I'm against vigilantism, but I'm no snitch at the end of the day. It's not cool to be a snitch, but I also suspect that I might have my reasons. Tsuyu first talked, Thanks for saving everyone, Izukan. I don't would have happened if you didn't arrive on time, or helped All Might against AFO. The boy blushed, anything for you, Tsuyu. I mean you the one that I love. The boy rubbed her cheek making her puff her cheeks and look away in amusement. Izuku's face went pale white as he jumped from Ibarra's lap and ran to Tsuyu asking innocently, another mommy. The girl blushed as she smiled before hugging the young girl saying, of course, Iri-chan. I will gladly be your mother. The other girls threw jealous looks at her. Takoyami and Tsubiraba only sighed in defeat. Tsuyu then threw herself in Izuku's lap as she said, well, Izukan, it seems that you're my prince charming now. Please, take care of me. She then gave him a kiss in a bold display of affection making the boy malfunction. All the while Iri was cheering him on. Izuku only had one thought at this moment, do this for Iri. Stay strong, he'll have to send us back at some point. He looked at Discord who was laughing, I'm going to kill him at some point. Tanjiro was secretly laughing till Kanao pointed out something that made him pale, what are you laughing about? There might be a world where Nezuko or a female Tanjiro is with him. The boy fell over in shock as he never thought about this with Kana laughing at his horrified face. The other girls were angry but pushed down their anger knowing that their turn will come eventually. Aizawa looked at him and said, The kid seems to be forming some sort of harem. I have to admit that I'm not sure if he's going to make it or not. Suyu then kissed him on the nose making him blush as she grabbed his hands and said, Izuku, can we please talk? 
The boy nodded his head as the girl sighed. Look, I know we spoke about this for thousand times, but I really think you should stop being a vigilante. Please go get yourself a hero license. I'm pretty sure if you talked with All Might, he'll pull some strings and clean your slate with the law. Izuku sighed as he flopped back on the couch. This was a normal discussion between them ever since Tsuyu knew his true profession years ago. He had to admit the girl had strong perseverance, but he just couldn't. There are a lot of factors that prevent him from doing that on top of them. He single-handedly battles 6% of crime in the entirety of Japan. Add to that, he'd be wasting time in school learning stuff he already knows. He's basically a university-level student. He's currently studying an online course on quirk theory. Tsuyu, please understand, I can't become a student at... He was silenced by a slap to the face from Tsuyu's tongue. Look, I know 6% and you already know most stuff, but do it for yourself. Izuku, for the last six years you've been rotting alone with me as the only friend you have. This is not healthy. Any normal person would have gone insane at this point, and it's only recently that you had to come into your life. So this is also for her as much as it is for you. Didn't you say that you want the best for her? Look at Tsuyu going. She's real handing to Izu. Takage said from the side with the rest of 1B girls nodding their heads along with one of girls. Izuku didn't know how to feel about this. Izuku replied, Well given that I single-handedly handle 6% of crimes in Japan, I don't think that I should waste my time in school especially if I knew things that I was going to be taught. Suyu, Ibarra, and Itsuka pinched his cheeks saying, What about Uri? Suyu first started, Even if you are doing a good job, you are no better than a villain since you are using your quirk above the law. Ibarra carried on, Furthermore, you can't just isolate yourself. You need people to talk to. And Itsuka finished, dot 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 and Uri needs a happy family not some type of chicken pen where she would be chained. Izuku frowned as he rubbed his cheeks which are glowing with pain, first off, there must be some other reasons. And stop pinching my cheeks, it hurts. The boy said as a tear slipped from his eye making the girl stop for a moment before proceeding with the pinching. Discord added, well, he is right that he did have other reasons regarding his refusal. Izuku looked away, I know that, but I have others reasons. If I go to UA, it means I have to meet her and be forced to go back and live with them. You know of all people how I don't want that. The girl sighed as she knew the boy was talking about his sister and his mother. What happened between them was a sad mixture of stupidity, misery, misunderstanding, and miscommunication. It was truly sad, but all this caused Izuku to run away from his home. Izuku lifted an eyebrow, so I have a sister. That's interesting. I have to admit that, but what happened between us to force me to run away? Discord replied, Well, your sister in that world took back Hugo's lead in making your life a living hell just because you were quirkless. Not to hurt, but to make quit being a hero since it was too dangerous for you. And Enko didn't help with her overbearing attitude and the sad looks which later on you thought were looks of disappointment and shame, so you were like if they don't want me, I might as well disappear from their lives. And Ko cried, Oh my baby, I'm sorry for making feel like this. I should have been more attentive to you. I only wanted to protect you, but I think I might have made feel even worse. Izuku smiled, It's alright, mom. You meant well and that's what counts at the end of the day. Suyu slapped him again, and I already told you, she doesn't hate you. Izuku, I've known her since the beginning of the year and she's still looking for you. She really loves you. Izuku replied defiantly, I doubt that. He ducked to avoid a slap but received a kick to the gut from the girl as she laughed a little with the boy adding. There's also the stuff I know about the HSPC. If I even reveal my face, they'd try to kill me and God knows what they'd do to you. Izuku looked at Hawks who said, Believe me, you don't want to know. You seriously don't want to know. Izuku slowly nodded his head as his hand unconsciously stroked Suyu's head. Izuku then narrowed his eyes, but we can have this talk later. I mean we do have a guest. He then looked at a corner, shouldn't the ninja hero be a little bit stealthier? Headshot's eyes widened as he yelled, we've been compromised. Everyone was startled as a video appeared on their computer screens with Izuku saying, I have to admit that you guys are quite annoying, but did you think you can set up this small shindig without me knowing? You should know that I have sensors implanted in a six feet radius around the property to help me with intruders. Endeavor, ever the hothead, blasted toward the door and blew it wide open as he said, I entered the facility. This was easier than I expected. A green flash happened blinding him for a moment. The flame hero sighed, I'm going to seriously regret this. I hope don't get too injured. Discord laughed, it depends on who he chooses, and believe some are seriously heavy hitters. I mean one of them is literally a walking nuclear reactor, and his cousin is a walking nuclear factory, and their best friend is a walking chemistry laboratory. Everyone paled regarding this as the three from the Tashio era were confused, but knew that these three things are seriously bad and harmful. They looked at the screen. An energy blast then hit Endeavor in the face as a man with a Russian accent, congrats. You passed level 1. Allow me to introduce you to level 2. A man in a metal suit walked from the dust as his fist was glowing red and the ground under him was melting into lava. Now, you might have entered my house to your own accord, but you will exist according to my own. At this other, heroes attacked. They were facing one of the vigilantes known as NRG. He was a walking nuclear reactor. Every time he appeared radiation sensors would spike. Whatever was under the suit was sealed in there for a reason. 
Aizawa swung through the air activating his quirk, attack him now. Kamui Woods attacked him, but he was shocked when he was shot and burnt as NRG said, I thought heroes were supposed to be smart. Guess not. Now stand down, I don't want to fight you all. Wow, I'm absolutely monstrous. This power I have seems really strong. Hizuku said with others nodding their heads as Discord said, Believe me when I say that this power is beyond the stars. Mina's eyes widened in happiness. Midnight then said, How about you take a good night's nap? She then ripped her costume and her quirk activated. The armored man then slapped the dial on the center of his armor as he turned into what looked like a giant turtle, Terraspin. Bakugo blinked, Is that a huge fucking turtle? And what is that supposed to do? Turtle her to submission. Use something useful, Deku. Izuku looked at him, I'm sure I have my reasons. No quirk is useless. I'm sure it is something that manages to turn Midnight's quirk against her. I study quirks for a living. Bakugo scoffed as he sat down and mentally agreed with the boy. Aizawa said, who wants to have a bet that he'll cause half of the heroes there to fall to sleep? Others looked at him like he was crazy, but still made the bet knowing that they might get a few easy bucks. Discord rolled his knowing how wrong they were. The turtle then jumped into the air as his hands and feet turned into a giant fan as they began to rotate releasing huge gusts of air and pushing the gas away toward the heroes. Sadly, most of them were engulfed in the gas causing them to be knocked out. Present Mike then came and said, Hey, little listener just surrender and make this easier for everyone. The turtle stopped as it clutched its head and slapped the dial and turned what seemed to be a small humanoid with plugs connected to his feet, echo echo. The small humanoid began to multiply as it said, You have a nice scream. Want to hear mine? The clones took a deep breath and released a high-pitched scream as the awake heroes scurried to safety. This was one of the more troublesome forms according to the HSPC. Endeavor then yelled, Flash Fist, Prominence Burn he released a huge gust of flames as All Might reared back his fist and yelled, Texas Smash he released a huge amount of air toward the remaining clones. Most of them were destroyed and they all regrouped as they returned to one clone. Izuku gulped as he pulled on his sweater saying, Wow, look at this. I'm facing off against both All Might and Endeavor. I hope I come out of this alive. It seems really dangerous. And she snorted, Well, kid, no offense, but this is what happens when you go way over your head. He was promptly smacked on the back of his head by his wife who was smiling innocently. Kaminari who was still sore about Izuku having a harem said, Well, I hate to agree, but he seems done for. Unless he can turn into a ghost and possess All Might to turn him against Endeavor. Now that would be truly insane. He looked at Discord who flashed him a smile as Denki said, He can do that. This very is to op, for its own good. He then stroked his chin trying, does it have something to do with the watch and the symbol? It seems to be the source of his power at this point. Gyro zipped him, don't be stupid. What kind of watch give? She was cut off by Discord, you are right. The watch is the source of his powers. Meanwhile, Aizawa was taking money from everyone since he won the bet against them. The clone slapped the dial and turned it into nothing. Everyone was confused till All Might heard a wispy voice, sorry, All Might, but I need to use your body for a bit. The hero didn't have time to react as Izuku used a ghost-like form to enter his body and try to possess him. Keyword being tried. Once the specter was inside the blonde hero, Ghost Freak found himself inside a room where seven figures were present. Six men and one woman. They looked at him with curiosity with the woman blitz speeding him and punching him as she said, Get out of Toshi. The ghost man was knocked from the man as he groaned, Man, I should have possessed the flaming idiot. At least, he is unoccupied. He then turned tangible as Maruko kicked where he was sitting. The ghost said, Wow, violence much. And they say violence against men is false. He then dashed at her, but the hero jumped away. She smiled, you ain't possessing my body. I don't like it today. We still have a score to still so go and turn into him. I want to retain my honor. The ghost blushed and said, don't phrase it like that. People might get the wrong idea. He then slapped the dial and transformed into a mixture of a humanoid hawk and a chicken. Are you happy now? Ready to have your butt kicked again, bunny girl. Maruko smirked, oh, I'm ready all right. I can't wait to have your chicken ass turned into jerky. The two ran at each other and began to kick and fight as other heroes tried to interfere with the rabbit hero yelling, don't butt in. I want to take him out myself. He made a joke out of me. Izuku frowned, made a joke out of you. You almost killed someone due to your rash behavior. What did you want me to do? Get you a pat on the back and tell you a good job. The hawk man jumped away avoiding a sharp feather blade slapping the dial and transformed into a dinosaur-like being with a jetpack on his back. Izuku went into the air and attacked hawks who told him, you know you attracted a lot of unwanted attention, kid. You're lucky I managed to convince them that you're more worth it alive than dead. The flying hero ducked under an energy blast from Izuku's mouth. Izuku looked at Hawks and the man once again said, Believe when I say you really don't want to know. It's for your own good. The boy nodded his head skeptically before looking at the rabbit hero. The woman looked away saying, I'm not that reckless. Whatever happened it must have had a reason for it. Izuku nodded his head, Aren't you the one who says teams are for weaklings? The hero shook her head, No, I work fine with each other when I'm needed. It's just that when it comes to small things, I like to work alone. Plus, I wouldn't do something so rash that it almost kills anyone. Mina said, can we ignore this and focus on how awesome this version of Izuku is? I mean he can turn into different forms and powers. He's the watch's power. Can it turn him into alien? 
The girl said with giddy as Discord nodded his head flashing her a thumbs up. Discord replied, Yes, Izuku in this world has a device known as the Omnitrix which allows him to turn into an alien from about one million choices. One of its forms is so strong, it is regarded as a god, but to use it you have to make the three voices, which exist in it, to agree for the action that they are planning to use. But Izuku managed to trick the two other voices into giving him full control while they argued together. The being named Astrodactyle replied, Whatever you say, bird boy, but they should know that if I'm injured all their small little secrets will be revealed to everyone on the news, and it will be a sweet dozy to see them squabbling among themselves to hide the truth. Hawks's eyes widened as he knew what he was talking about and yelled, Do you even understand what you'll do if you reveal those papers? Izuku rubbed his chin transforming once more into a planet like alien as he took a spherical form and grabbed Hawks's feathers causing them to rotate around him, I think it will be justice served to everyone. Maybe, Lady Nagan will be released from prison. Hawks was forced to fly away as his feathers came blitzing at him. The bird hero then took control once again of his feathers and put him back into his wings, this isn't going to be easy like we thought. Izuku went to the ground and turned again into a reptilian-like being saying, well, it was fun, but I have to go. He quickly ran to grab Suyu and took her somewhere safe and think what to do next given that he got her into this mess, but a torrent of flames blocked his path causing him to change again into a being made from rocks and absorb the heat. The flames of Endeavor began to flicker out as the being said, dude, you should know that you can't fight me at this point. The being pointed to himself and said, I'm called Heat Blast for a reason, you know. The two looked at each other as Endeavor snarled, may the best fire user win and the two began their fight for superiority. Izuku chuckled, well, look at that. It appears Endeavor meets his match. Todoroki laughed, well, I have to say it's going to be fun to see my father's own flames used against him. Can I have more soba to eat? The man in question did what he does usually and screamed, S-H-O-T-O. Aizawa looked at his student and said, Shoto, after this ends, you're going to have concentrated therapy. This isn't healthy. The boy frowned as he looked away. Mina replied, Can we ignore Shoto's horrible family life and focus that Izuku has an alien watch? Imagine, if I had this watch, I can bring interstellar peace. She noticed everyone laughing at her as she pouted and looked away. Discord threw away a tear from his eyes, I think this is enough for now. Now, I want to hear what you have to say about this world. 11th Universe. Mina jumped in happiness, this world is cool. Tell me all about it. I need to know everything there is to know about this world. Oh, how was my reaction when I first met him? What type of aliens did he have? She then stopped for a moment before she resumed her momentum of questions. Tell me, does he have powers similar to mine? Did he have fun using his powers? And also he did he master his powers and become stronger? I have so many questions. Her eyes then began to shine, also, are there aliens in that world? Please tell me. Discord rubbed his forehead as he felt the headache to end all headaches come to him. He then put a hand on Mina's mouth and forced her to sit down. Wow, you had a serious Nejire moment there. The pink girl rubbed the back of her head sheepishly while the blue-haired girl pouted and frowned. Discord cleared his throat. Okay, lots of questions. When you first met him, you were all over him. You literally crawled all over him like a swarm of ants. So you had to slap you with her tongue to get you off him. And yes, he has different power sets that you similar to yours. Now regarding the aliens, I'll tell the first ten he had. There was the ghost you saw which is called Ghost Freak. An eyeless dog-like creature named Wild Mutt. The raptor alien you saw XRL8, a four-armed creature named Surprisingly Four Arms, the flaming man you saw at last named Heat Blast, a merman named Ripjaws, a man made of crystals named Diamond Head, a small toad-like with a mind that rivals Nezu named Grey Matter, a techno bubble named Upgrade, and a bug-like creature named Stinkfly. All Might gasped, I have to admit that his powers are quite varied and various, though I wonder how didn't I take him for someone working for FO. I mean he seems that he has multiple powers. The man still remembers every time he mistook dual quirk people for people working with AFO. Discord looked at him and said, I'll come back to you. As for the rest of your questions Mina, he didn't have fun with his powers. You see, he knew that with his powers great responsibilities came along, so he never abused them. And as for training, he used the same beach that All Might trained him to use and understand his powers, and he came along a very far way. Discord then said, All right, All Might you asked me if you ever thought that he worked for FO over there? The answer is yes. You were very paranoid about a bunch of vigilantes with multiple powers running around. Let alone, a child with multiple powers. You only calmed when he aided you in taking AFO down. The hero nodded his head. He can understand why he eventually threw the accusations. Kokushibu asked him, Now I know that I'm not from here, but I do feel a little bit inclined on how the boy came upon such a strong device. It is hard to believe that he just stumbled on it during some random part. Discord laughed a little bit, Well, there is some truth to your last statement. Everyone looked at him weirded out as he said, Well, there are certain worlds where Izuku just walks around and happens to stumble upon it, and he learns its secrets. The black-haired man didn't seem impressed, but in this world, someone gave it to him after he saw that he has a truly heroic spirit, but other than that, he didn't stick around much. Ajiro then asked, But wouldn't it be much more beneficial for him to have a mentor? I mean I'm a martial artist, and I could have learned fighting from videos, but I needed someone to guide me. The other hero students nodded their heads along with Tanjiro and Kanao. 
Discord shook his head. Well, you might think so, but no. In some cases having a mentor is much worse than not having one. The device which he uses needs to be learned solely through first-hand experience, and having a mentor won't change much. Plus, the mentor himself didn't understand till later on in life, so he wouldn't have much help. But Izuku is ten times smarter than him, so it was good. Plus, this mentor has a lot of villains who will come following. Izuku gulped a little as he asked, like what type of villains? Discord shrugged, you know your usual tyrannical alien dictator wannabe, the dimension hopping time traveler who wants unlimited power, the insane doctor, and the zombie clown who all by the way still shows up at some point or the other. Well, let me process that for a moment, the boy rubbed his head, are there other ways for me to gain this power, or is it solely through this device? Discord nods his head, well, sometimes you manifest naturally like a quirk, he then looked at F.O. who smiled, dot 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 or you have the world's worst father. Izuku sighed a little rubbing his forehead, let me guess, he did some experiments on me while I was still in my mom's womb, didn't he? Discord nods, yes, he hoped to create the ultimate weapon, but Izuku refused to bend to his will. And Ko hated him due to the pain she experienced from being pregnant with him for four full years while AFO experimented on him. He was born into a cell and was treated badly by everyone, especially his mom who was an unwilling participant in this experiment. When All Might busted AFO's chops, Izuku was sent to jail, and the Omnitrix was made to help the HSPC control his powers and make him work for them. But he refused and managed to escape and befriended a girl which betrayed him for money causing him to develop a deep sense of hatred toward women. In the end, Izuku became a vigilante who saved people to prove to others even though he was the Demon King's son that doesn't make him evil, and a lot of things happened that caused him to rip AFO into pieces. In the end, Izuku was cornered inside an alley by many heroes and was killed by All Might. Izuku died with a smile on his face knowing that he was going to meet the one person who truly cared about him. All Might looked at his hands, I killed him, but why? He's just a child. Discord shook his head, because All Might, some versions of you hate AFO so much that you see anyone remotely related to him as pure evil. That version of yourself truly thought that killing Izuku would be doing the world a huge favor. Nezu looked at him and said, All Might, I'll put you within you on regular sessions every Monday. The blonde hero replied, Please do. I'm quite shaken from this. To think that in a different world, his obsession with his nemesis caused him to kill a child just because he was his son. Izuku looked at F.O. and said, Worst dad in the history of dad. This gourd cut him off by saying, Not exactly. In fact, most versions of F.O. I came across are actually decent parents who live and stop you from doing stupid shit. He then pointed at All Might, he's actually the bad dad. All Might felt even weaker as AFO smiled and said, Just for your information, I want you to know that I was a good brother, and unlike what you think I didn't lay a finger on dear little brother. He was already sick when I put him inside his vault for his safety. Yoichi scoffed, Vaulting me won't change the truth that the Demon King can't win. You have his right hand man here. Ask him what happened to his boss. The young puffed his chest victoriously. AFO replied, Oh my sweet little naive brother, you should know that I don't care what did. All I care about is what I do to ensure that I can prove to you that villains do win in the end. Itsuka rubbed Izuku's back as he cried a little, There, there, Izu. I know it's frustrating to know that you're trapped inside a two-century squabble between brothers, but we're here for you. Tanjiro was last patting him on the back, while the OFA users were reviewing their life choices. Setsuna coughed, Okay, changing the subject before I have a blood clot, tell me about that god guy Izu has in that fancy watch of his. Discord smiled, Yes, he calls him Alien X and a single snap from his fingers is good enough to destroy the universe and rebuild it in seconds. Everyone was amazed at such a power, but he uses him only in world-ending cases since that is too much power for anyone to have. Shoto then asked, You said that there are cases where he has a mentor. Do other versions of himself have different mentors? Discord nodded, Yes, many versions of himself have different mentors. I have myself had a mentor that taught me everything I know. I might bring him out later on. He's currently sleeping. Speaking of other mentors, you have two right here. Everyone looked at the Demon Slayers. There are many worlds where Tanjiro and Kokushibo are his mentors. Kano asked him, What about me? Rare, but happens if he was a girl. The girl nodded. Though sometimes with Kokushibo, it is for less than holy reasons, Discord said. Bakugo said, either he's making him his successor in case he was taken out or he's using the nerd to come back to life by hijacking his body. He looked at Izuku, stop trusting people so easily, nerd. It's a biohazard for your life and ours apparently. Izuku could only pout and say, I'm not like that. Shoto shook his head, no, that is you to a T please, Midoriya don't trust anyone who pretends to give you a hand of friendship. It's dangerous for all people involved. The boy sighed as he said, all right, but just for your information, I'm not that dumb. He crossed his arms as Tsuyu giggled and began to stroke his hair. He then looked at Discord and asked, are there any aliens hiding on that earth? Discord smiled, yes, in that world, Kamakiri is an alien from the underground alien city that exists under Musutafa. 
He used the quirks to give him a perfect human cover, but you almost blew it. Mina looked at the mantis-looking boy who yelled, Stop right there, Pinky. I'm human as they can get. I'm no alien and I by no way came from outer space. The girl huffed as she looked away with annoyance. She hated how some people had no imagination whatsoever. Cyril raised his hand, Did they catch him at any point or did he get to UA? Discord nodded his head, Yeah, they managed to catch after this small confrontation. They decided to make an assistant teacher at UA, since forcing him to become a hero was a stupid idea. Seeing that no one had anything to say, he looked at Izuku, all right, mini-me. What do you have to say about this? I mean that this is you after all. Izuku glared at him and said, I hate you. He cringed when his other self laughed, all right, I think this world is interesting. It shows me as a person who works hard and is willing to burden himself for the sake of others. The powers are awesome, but it seems that I have too much power on my hands. I just hope that I don't abuse it at some point, other than that I'm cool. The Chaos Master exclaimed, All right, let the Wheel of Enteral Embarrassment give us its judgment. Izuku felt a vein throb along his forehead. He then saw the wheel stop on a world called the Backstage of UA. Izuku tilted his head, What does that mean? Are going to show something regarding me hacking the system of UA. I think that would be cool. It means that I'm smarter than Nezu. Nezu looked at him and smiled, Challenge accepted, young Midoriya. Discord shook his head, No, not exactly. I guess that you have to watch and find out. Isn't that the most beautiful thing about this? There is no way to know anything other than watching and understanding. Izuku launched himself into the sky as a giant overhaul was following and yelling, That girl is a curse. I'm the only one who will be able to use her to her fullest extent. Give her back this instant. Izuku only growled as he said sent a punch toward the man in his monster form and said, No, I will never do that, because how can I call myself a hero? He lifted his fist looking at the man, If I can't save one small girl. Everyone shivered as they remembered seeing the fight. Hiri hid herself inside Ibarra's hair to protect herself from seeing overhaul. Momo then said, This is seriously terrifying. I mean seeing it on the TV is something, but seeing it up close is another whole level. Did you really face that monster head on? Izuku chuckled saying, Yeah, I did, but I would do it another million times for Hiri. He hugged the little girl who calmed down after seeing him. This was one of the many reasons he saw him as her papa. The two went to attack each other. Izuku lifted his fist as Hiri clung to him for dear life, while overhaul sent out his hand toward them. Everyone at this moment was invested in this fight. It was such an intense moment that you couldn't get your eyes off it. They wanted to see what will happen next. Suddenly a voice rang throughout the place as someone said, Cut. That's a warp for today. Tomorrow we finish the fight. Be here at 12 sharp to finish the scene. A man with a director cut walked to the street that was actually a part of filming studio. Everyone was shocked at this as they all yelled in one voice, What in the world is happening here? It seems that they stumbled on an acting world, but that seemed impossible, right? Discord began to laugh, well, as you can see this is a world where all of you are a bunch of actors in action series called My Hero Academia, and Izuku is the lead star. Mina and Toru jumped squealing in happiness, tell us everything about this world. Are we famous? Are we superstars? Do we have fans? Discord grabbed them and put them on the ground, alright, calm down your horses. First off, Mina is a well-known actress who has five blockbuster movies under her belt even though she is only 25 years old. As for Toru, she's a fashion model who does acting on the side, but she does have a show where she is a main character. You both have fans and creepy stalkers too. The girl's face is soured at the mention of stalkers or at least Mina since Toru was invisible. Izuku then asked, so there are no quirks in that world. They only exist in the minds of readers of manga and comic books. Yes, Discord replied, in that world, quirks don't exist. People are all as you may call them quirkless and have no power. The most impressive thing they have is the ability to lift a car after years of muscle training and that's if we're talking about a small car. Kanjiro asked, wait if there is a world where they are only actors, does that mean there is one where we're the same? He didn't like the thought of his suffering as just something people watch to entertain themselves in the afternoon. Discord smiled saying, well, you'll have to wait to find out. He didn't like this smile. As Izuku was being lowered from the air, wires were visible from his suit. Once he landed on the ground, he jumped off his back and ran toward Overhaul or Kai, Daddy, did I play my part right? The man embraced her in a hug, yes, sweetie. You did really good today. Everyone's jaws hit the ground as they couldn't comprehend the scene in front of them. In this world, Kai was Iri's dad and he was a good one, but then Izuku remembered that the man was just an actor, so he couldn't say that he was a bad person per se. Hiri then asked, Daddy, I'm confused. Isn't he a bad person? Why am I calling him dad? The boy calmed his breath since there is no escaping this, do you remember when we play make-believe? The girl nodded her head happily, well, in that world, Kai is a good person who is your dad, and he's only playing make-believe with you and he's not actually hurting you. The girl was still confused but nodded her head nonetheless. Izuku walked toward him and he smiled, Uncle Zuku, did I do good? I really looked scared there didn't I? The boy smiled at his niece. If he had to be honest, his older brother terrified him a little in his performance. The boy smiled as he rubbed the girl's head, of course, Iri. He then said, because of that, I'm taking you to eat ice cream after this. The girl lifted her arms and began to cheer. Her dad then said, Iri, no sugar for you. Do you remember the last time you ate sugar what happened? 
the girl pretended to be ignorant, remembering how she trashed her room and the house causing her father a lot of headaches and a fist to the head from her mom. She tried her puppy eyes, but the reply was instant, no. Harry then crossed her arms and pouted, oh, sugar muffins. Izuku blinked a little as he looked at his niece and said, Uri, that's the wrong way to say it. The girl looked at him in confusion, you have to say ah, foo. He was then slapped on the head by Kai yelling, stop corrupting my daughter. Izuku noticed three glares at him and chuckled awkwardly, wow, I guess that I'm Kai's younger brother in that world. That's really interesting, to say the least, and apparently, I'm trying to corrupt Uri. The boy was confused about why he was doing this. Discord said, Well, in that world, it seems that you have foul language that gives Bakugo a run for his money. It seems that you can't spend five minutes without at least saying fuck. Izuku only said, Well, at least I'm not like Kakin who can only stay five sex without swearing. The explosive blonde was about to launch himself, but Kirishima stopped him saying that it wasn't worth it. Izuku rubbed the back of his head, a simple stop it would have been simple. Damn, it hurts. You have one hell of a hand on you. I felt like a sledgehammer hit me in the head. Kai scoffed. With your language, I think I might as well have used one. Stop doing this. He glared darkly at him, dot 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 or I will tell mom to deal with you. The boy immediately fell to the ground, I'm extremely sorry that I did this, but please don't tell mom. She's still angry about the vase. I don't want to see her reaction about this. Kai smiled as he said, Goodery at the main time was laughing at him. She then asked, Uncle Zuku, can you take me to meet Ibarra? I really like her. She's so nice and funny. The boy rubbed the back of his head as he remembered that the girl was currently doing a swimsuit photo shoot. She was busy, and he couldn't reach her. The girl was really good at her thing, plus she managed to score a role on the show. In actuality, the girl only took the role of the religious girl as a middle finger to him when he told her that she couldn't pull it off. I'm sorry, Hiri, but she's really busy. The girl pouted a little as he cursed under his breath, damn it. So cute. Ibarra looked with wide eyes. Swimsuit photo shoot. What was that version of herself even thinking of doing something so sinful? Then again, she saw a few moments ago a world where she was a teenage mom, but still. She gulped, I don't think I feel so good. Izuku hugged her saying, calm down. Whatever she does, it doesn't represent you. The girl nodded her head before looking at Discord, is she at least religious to some extent? The Chaos Master smiled, no not really. In that world, you're a full-on atheist who doesn't believe in God, but if it helps, you do charity work for the poor. The girl smiled weakly before looking at Izuku. The boy gulped as the girl asked him, Izuku, when we get married, you'll respect my religion, right? The boy began sweating, where the hell did that come from? Yes, of course. I'll make sure to take care of you. The girl hugged him and rubbed her face against his face. The other two went jealous and did the same thing as they asked, us too, right? The boy nodded weakly as his soul officially left his body only to be returned courtesy of Discord. I have to see, Izuku looked at Kai, you really nailed the role of the villain Kai. I mean for a moment there I actually thought that you were serious about killing me. The man laughed a little, well, I like to embody the role that I play. Add to that, I usually take the occasional body guy role, so I became very proficient in acting the role. The man explained with a little bit of pride in his voice which was true since he had an Oscar for a role in a movie. During the shooting of the third season, Kai's acting was so realistic that Uri's original actor and her substitute quit from fear causing many delays. So finally Kai decided to bring in his real daughter who was used to playing hero and villain with him. Izuku then fired at him an air-to-air -air missile. Wow, that explains why your neighbors look at you like you're going to kill them at night and they're bad. Kai felt a vain throb as he fired back, says the guy who needs a filter to his mouth and only got the lead role in this show because Bakugo has resident bitch face and Todoroki gave off an emo vibe according to the director. You were their third option. Izuku only said, so apparently in that world, I have a foul mouth what a weird coincidence. Shoto looked at his mom and said, mom, I don't have an emo vibe, do I? The woman shook her head, of course not, my snow flame. You're the shiniest boy I ever met. Isn't that right, NG? The man coughed a little clearing his throat, well, he does have his moments sometimes. The man then felt a chill travel through his spine as he looked at his wife. The woman had a very unimpressed look as her face was darkened with her eyes being pure white, I mean you're the most shining star that I ever saw. The man looked at his wife who smiled making him sigh in relief. The boy was weirded out as he said, well, thanks for that, I think at least. Beck Hugo was currently foaming at the mouth as he looked at the screen and said, what the fuck did that idiot say I have? who has a resident bitch face. He was smacked to silence by his mom who told him to suck it up. The boy then heard someone calling him out. He looked to the side and saw the hero of the neighboring studio set. The boy was staring at the show named Demon Slayer, and he had to agree that the boy was one of the nicest people that he ever met. He had no idea how he managed to get a role with so much violence. Tanjiro came up to him and said, Izuku, how are you today? I heard that you were doing fine and that you're about to finish the big fight of season 4. That's so fantastic. Izuku smiled, yeah, I'm doing good actually. I heard that you're about to finish season 1 if I'm correct. The boy nodded his head quickly. He was about to ask another question when he heard a car horn. Tanjiro apologized, sorry, but I have homework in school tomorrow, so I have to go. 
Big Brother can get impatient sometimes. Izuku always wondered how the good guy of the show was related to the big bad, but who was he to judge? Tanjiro's soul evacuated his body once he saw that his brother in that world was musing himself, but returned quickly, okay, calm down. That guy is an actor so he isn't a demon or someone who hurts others. Even with that knowledge, I still wish I can cut my eyes out. Discord looked at him and said, Wow, you're taking this better than I believed you would. I'm shocked. The boy gave a weak thumbs up as he tried to compose himself. A man with long black hair then walked past Izuku saying, Why did I have to take two rolls? This is so tiring. I just want to go home and sleep. Michikatsu said, I suppose that I don't exist in that world, and only my brother does. He's also playing two roles mine and his. Discord appeared beside him and said, If it makes you feel any better, your character was inspired by his childhood friend, and you were supposed to be a demon turned good, but they scraped it since you look like you crawled from hell. The man took a deep breath and let out a sigh, Peaky. That's just Peaky. Discord began to laugh evilly. Man, I have to thank Nezu-sensei for all the things he taught me. Aizawa asked him, and what in the world he taught for you to become twisted like this? Discord smiled, well if you must know, he taught world domination. The teachers paled while Nezu laughed like a madman, and also the most important lesson, why screw with one person, when you can screw with multiple people at once. Nezu replied, show them, my disciple. Show them the true power of chaos. The two began to laugh with each other like insane people. Momo stood up and said, so you brought the others here to screw with them? The chaos master nodded, you're truly an evil human being. The girl crossed her arms and looked away from him. The Chaos Master said, well, they are still having fun. It's not like they're not enjoying it. She looked at everyone and they nodded as she pouted, I suppose so, but don't overdo it. Izuku was sitting and reading his lines for the final fight. He was nervous. This was one of the most important moments of season 4, and he didn't want to screw it. Suddenly his vision went dark as he heard a soft voice, guess who's this? Izuku smiled as he twirled around grabbing Ibarra by her waist and kissing her, my beautiful girlfriend, Ibarra. The girl smiled softly as she hummed saying, so how are you doing? Are you ready for your big moment in the show? I'm really excited to see you. The boy smiled a little, yeah, I am, but fuck. I'm really worried. I'm a little worried that I might mess up. You get what I mean. The girl nodded her head. She then grabbed Izuku's cheeks and made him look her in the eyes. Izuku looked at Ibarra and blushed. The girl did the same thing, and they both wondered, what is going to happen? I'm nothing too serious. My heart can't take it anymore. The girl then said, I believe in you, Izuku. I mean if I manage to pull off a religious girl, you can pull off the hero thing easily. She then stood up and said, but I'm still angry about my role at the last moment. The girl was supposed to be the lead girl in love interest with Izuku, but budget cuts and the nightmare of her special hair made her go into class 1B and Achako make it into 1A. Izuku laughed a little as he liked this yander side of his girlfriend, don't worry. You'll always be the main star of my life. The girl smiled softly before hugging making sure to take a cigarette from the pack on the table and went out to get a fresh breath of air. Ibarra looked with a sad look, I smoke too. I suppose I have to get used to this. She pouted as Izuku rubbed her back to make her feel better. This was going out of hand and it was becoming borderline scary, but everyone was enjoying himself. He knew that would end as soon as a villain version of himself popped up. The boy once again returned to reading his script, but suddenly the door of the trailer was flung open as Kirishima and his twin Tetsu Tetsu barged in, How are you, Bushbro? The boy fell from his chair to the ground with a dazed expression. Both boys have the decency to blush. The two boys rushed in and helped him up as Kirishima said, Wow, we're really sorry bro, but we didn't know that you were nervous. Usually, you're the opposite of that. The boy shook his head a little, Well, I am a little bit nervous regarding the boss fight scene. I mean you don't get to do that every day of the week. I'm just a little bit worried that I might fail the role and do badly in it. The boy said with a weak smile, Dude, you're playing which has nothing to do with you. I mean if Bakugo can pull off a bad boy, you can pull off the fight. I mean look at the guy. He's a total crybaby bitch. He cries from shampoo commercials. Tetsu Tetsu said trying to cheer Izuku up. Izuku smiled remembering his co-worker who was one of the nicest people he has met. The guy had no evil bone in his body, it was his face that made him look like a deranged sociopath. Izuku was pretty sure that the role was Katsuki's first bad boy role given that the last role was a prince of a kingdom of fairies. Bakugo was foaming at the mouth as he heard this. What was that version of himself thinking? He was making him look weak in front of everyone. He looked at Discord and yelled, open a portal right now. I need to teach that version of myself how to be a man. Discord grinned as he opened a portal that Bakugo jumped into. A few moments later, he came out of it looking like a caveman with a huge beard and animal clothes with a sack. His mother fell over laughing with everyone else. Bakugo looked at Discord and yelled, You bitch, what's wrong with your mind? I almost died in that little stunt of yours. I was stuck in that damned place for 25 fucking years. Discord shrugged, consider it extra training. Bakugo merely growled as he sat down. The green-haired boy then asked the others, Where is he by the way? I haven't seen him for like three days now. Both boys looked at him like he grew a second head. Kirishima said, Didn't you know? Momo gave birth to their child like a week ago. He's just having time with the baby before he comes back to set with her. The boy blinked. He didn't hear of that. Was he so distracted that he didn't notice such a thing? 
A voice then echoed, Everyone, get ready, we're on in five minutes. Momo put a hand to her mouth as she said in disgust, I'm with Bakugo in that world. This will only end in headaches or migraines. I bet I will need a huge amount of pills just to be able to process anything he says. Bakugo then yelled, Hey, I'm not that bad, you know. I'm a decent person. Momo then said, Who tells people to kill themselves? I find that hard to believe, though I will give you credit that you do feel guilty about it and never meant if your reactions are anything to go about with. The boy didn't say anything but bit on a banana from his sack. His hair then turned into rainbows. He looked up and shrugged before continuing to eat as if nothing ever happened. Kirishima grabbed Izuku and dragged him outside saying, Come on, bro. It's time for the big action scene. Let's get rolling. Kirishima grabbed his upper part while Tetsu grabbed his lower part and they began to drag Izuku toward the set. The boy said, You two know that I can perfectly work, right? They looked at him and nodded. They finally reached the set and Izuku began taking deep breaths to calm himself down for it wasn't every day that you do something as huge as this, so he grabbed a juice box and drank it. The director came in and said, Listen, everyone, I want this scene to be perfect. I want to feel the evil intents of the villain from behind the screen when I rewatch it. I want to feel the struggle and pain of the hero when I see it. He looked at everyone and said, Got it. Everyone nodded their heads as the director turned toward Izuku, and you, I need you to bring your best to the table today. I want to feel the same energy that I felt with Muscular. Izuku only nodded his head. How someone as peaceful as the actor that played Muscular managed to pull off his role was a mystery for him. Izuku began to sweat, I swear that I'm nervous in his place. Acting is tough and worrisome. I'm really happy that I'm not an actor. He didn't notice Aizawa giving an unimpressed look that said you're afraid of acting and not fighting crazy villains. Kinoko said, Izuku, how are you afraid of acting while you're not afraid of breaking your bones? The boy chuckled a little bit. He blushed and began to scratch his cheek as he supposed that his friends were right on some accounts. The director then yelled, All right people, put the boy in the harness so we can begin the scene. The boy walked with the specialist to get him in his gear and begin the greatest part of his life. Izuku wiped some sweat as the others laughed at him, This is really nerve-wrenching. I hope I managed to get this scene right. Bakugo scoffed, Tell me, how were you planning to get into the hero course with nerves of jelly beans? Discord laughed at the comment, Well, that's funny. Alright, let's move on and see what you can say. Twelfth Universe. Toru bounced up and down, that world was so cool. I have the one thing I desire attention to. It's really amazing. I'm some kind of superstar, but I have to ask how old am I in that world? Because I know that most teenage roles are taken by actors who are older than they seem. She quieted a little before asking again, Oh, oh, and do I have some kind of scandal? I know most stars have some kind of scandals revolving around them. Everyone looked at her confused as she said, What? Is there something on my face? Discord shook his head, No, but you want to have attention, don't you? The girl squirmed a little as he patted her head, There, there, don't feel bad. I know being invisible must be hard for you, so I don't blame you, but tone down a notch. The girl nodded her head. Discord then cracked his neck, All right, your questions are as follows. First off, you are 23 years old in that world and are considered the 10th beautiful woman in the world according to the beauty index. Mina hugged Toru who was blushing, but no one could see her due to her invisibility. As for the scandal, you have a scandal where you were accused of flashing the people in a beauty contest as ironic as it is. The girl was now happy to be invisible not wanting anyone to see her expression of disbelief on her face. Ibarra asked him, Do I act in big movies? Everyone from her friends looked at her making her say, What? I already have a child in one world, might as well see what kind of roles I usually take. And how did I meet him in this world? Thank you. The chaos being smiled, All right, Ibarra. Well, you mostly work in low-budget movies because you aren't too keen on acting, but most roles are usually a strong-headed girl who fights or the usual damsel in distress that needs saving like your role in Snow White. The girl smiled, oh that sounds amazing. I always loved this story. My mom used to read to me when I was a small toddler. It was such a delightful story. Discord then said, I'm happy that you like this. Now regarding how you met Izuku, you met him when he was your prince charming during Snow White. You two talked a little and then agreed to keep seeing each other. The hero girl smiled a little bit, I think that is the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. This seems like a true fairy tale comes true. The hero of the story gets his girl. It sounds like God made us for each other. She rubbed her face against Izuku, isn't that right, Izu? Kendo and Suyu then hugged making sparks emit between the three girls and Izuku sweated a little bit as he said, Please mamas, don't fight. I love you very much. The girls looked at her and hugged saying, Of course, not sweetie. We're just having a little bit of competition with each other on who can make your daddy happier. The boy blushed as Discord laughed a little bit. Discord then asked, Does anyone have another type of question? He noticed that no one was asking anything and he shrugged given that this world wasn't as interesting as the others. But Mina lifted her hand, you said that Ibarra and Izubeba are with each other, and so is Momo and Bakugo. The chaos being nodded, so who is also in a relationship in that world? The chaos hero smiled, well, I know a couple of relationships for example, Shoto is with Ochako, you're with Shinso, Nejair is with Siro, Yui is with Shota. The girl smiled happily at the relationships and looked at Shinso who simply shrugged. 
This gourd then said, any type of meaningful questions, ones that aren't of the lovey-dovey type. No one talked so he looked at Izuku, all right, let's get this show moving. Naomi, what do you have to say before I embarrass you some more? The boy merely glared at him fighting off the urge to pull a kakken moment. The boy sighed, I think that this world was a little bit amusing. The thought of me being an actor is unrealistic. I mean I can barely look people straight in the eye, let alone act in front of millions of people. Discord nodded his head, all right moving on, let the wheel give us its eternal wisdom. The wheel began to rotate till it landed on something that made Discord's eyes go wide and he laughed like a manic. The sign showed, Kakken and Deku. Izuku dared to ask, why are laughing this much? The boy looked at Katsuki who was just as confused as he was. The boy wondered if they had to clear everyone from Katsuki's blast radius. The being of chaos smiled as Izuku thought, oh no, that's going to cause complete chaos. The boy looked at Katsuki who had everyone eyeing him like he was a bomb going to explode. Discord then said, leave have everyone move away from Boom Boy or you'll be smoked. Everyone ran away except Kokushibo causing Discord to say, you aren't a demon with hyper-regeneration here. You'll be injured like the rest of them. The man then quickly bolted it. Katsuki looked around and said what a bunch of cowards. He then stroked his beard, this means you're all just afraid of my strength. Discord then said, hardly, no one wants to have explosion scars on their bodies. Me and every Izuku who allows you to torture us like this are just a bunch of wimps. Katsuki then almost blew a fuse, but he calmed himself down. The scene then switched to a home. It slowly moved inside of it till it landed on something that made everyone chuckle a little with Nezu and Discord laughing like insane people. Inside the house, there was a small mouse hole with a string in it. The scene then follows the string that ends in a cat basket. The cat inside the basket then wakes up stretching. It was a blonde cat with ruby red eyes. He leans on the side of the basket and grabs the string. Everyone is holding off their laughter till Mina said, Don't tell me that they're like that cartoon we used to watch when we were younger. This is so hilarious. And Bakugo is the cat. The role kinda fits him. Bakugo merely glared at her to make sure that she was dead enough when exploded her. He was about to become the world's greatest joke. He knew this cartoon and what usually happened to the cat and how the mouse usually outsmarted him. Tanjiro asked, what is the meaning of this and why don't I see anyone familiar? And why does that cat resemble him? Pointing to Katsuki, and why is everyone laughing? Discord answered him, well, you see in some worlds. They aren't human per se. In this one, Katsuki is that cat. Regarding why everyone is laughing, you'll see soon enough. The scene went back to the mouse hole, the cat began pulling the string and from the mouse hole came out an angry looking mouse with green fur and shaggy looking hair with its arms crossed. He was unamused. The mouse was now in front of the basket as he was handed a glass cup. The cat then lowered its hand and pointed toward the kitchen causing the mouse to go there to fill the cup with milk. The hero students laughed a little at this scene. Izuku smiled a little knowing that he was the mouse. Bakugo looked at him and glared. Izuku then said, oh man, the fun is about to begin. The cat then had a rubber straw which it put inside the cup as it began to drink from it. He then grabbed the green mouse and patted it on the head before flicking it back to its house. Katsuki then fell over laughing at the scene as he said, See Deku, not all the episodes have the cat being the one defeated and bothered. I bet I'm going to kick your ass. Hizuku smiled as he said, This is still in its beginning. At least wait till the end. The scene now changed to the outside as the delivery van pulled beside the house. The cat looked outside seeing a man with a small gift walking toward the front door. He began to imagine what was inside the gift which was various foods in his opinion till he heard a soft meowing sound that knocked him out of his daydreaming. He jumped up in shock and quickly ran to see what was happening. In front of his owner's legs was a small kitten with pink, white, and black fur all over. He was not happy at all, while the mouse that was also looking had a dreamy face of happiness. Mina smiled as she knew who the cat represented and from the looks of the boiling gravity girl knew the same thing. She walked close to her and said, Chaco, isn't it time to go to your Prince Charming? The Machai girl's eyes lit up, but before she can stand Discord appeared. Discord shook his head, sorry, but this doesn't count. Better luck next time. The girl was disappointed. The cat then retreated a little and kicked the mouse back to its hole. She then concluded that if the kitten stays everything will go to hell for him. He won't be the favorite anymore. Once he saw the owner was gone, he decided to get rid of the small kitten, but the mouse had different plans. Kakken then went quickly and grabbed the cat trying to throw her outside the house. Deku saw this and quickly removed the string holding him and swung at the cat who was about to kick the kitten through the window. The rope attached itself to the cat's leg causing him to rotate around him before falling to the ground. The kitten on the other hand went flying in the air causing the mouse to go and grab a pillow to save it. Laughter was echoing at Bakugo who was steaming like a potato. Cyril looked at him, what the heck Bakugo? That's so hilarious. I think my heart is about to explode from laughing. This is so fun. Izuku was putting his hands on his face to stop his laughter not wanting Bakugo to go on a full murdering spree should he see him laughing as he re-laughed into his chest with the girls chuckling beside him adding more to Bakugo's annoyance. 
The blonde boy looked to the side and noticed that the three guests weren't laughing which calmed him a little, but little did he know that two of the three were holding back their laughter. Tanjiro and Kano had one thought, this is so funny. Meanwhile, Michikatsu had another thought that took him back to the time he was still among the living, reminds a bit of Akaza and Dalma. The kitten flew through the air as Deku was following it with a pillow till she finally landed in it with its tail being the only part visible. The kitten came out of the pillow and began to lick Deku in the face which he accepted as he patted it on the head. Kaken looked at the scene and frowned as he stood up and ran toward them. This caused Deku to lift the pillow and run with it, but the cat ambushed them grabbing the kitten. Deku kept running till he was stopped as he collided with the table's leg. This caused a plate to fall on him. He looked and saw the cat running toward the window to finish its plans. Deku then threw the plate toward the cat which had it under its leg. Manga then said, something extremely funny is about to happen. Prepare yourselves. The others nodded their heads as they looked back at the scene in front of them while Bakugo was bubbling with rage. His face was so red that someone can mistake him for a stop sign. The cat began to spin around like a tornado as it let go of the kitten that the mouse caught, but the cat kept spinning. Going outside the window and burrowing into the ground with its legs out as Deku made sure to close the window with a devilish look. Ha ha ha, Bakugo was transformed into a mole. Kaminari, Kirishima, Siro, Mina, and many more said at the same time as they laughed heavily. Bakugo foamed as he launched himself at them, but was smacked by a wall that pushed him back. Izuku finally broke down in laughter as the girls beside him did the same, I just can't hold it anymore. It is so funny. This is the best thing that I ever saw in my entire life. A little while later, Deku was seen in the cat's basket laying on the kitten as he heard tapping on the glass. He opened his eyes and saw the cat which demanded he opens the window or he'll face the consequences. The mouse only made fun of his threats. The cat gasped as the mouse was feeding the kitten from his glass of milk. The cat then ran back and began to charge toward the door which opened right in front of him as a banana peel which placed in front of him causing him to gasp and jump. The mouse and the kitten looked at him as he stuck out his tongue. The cat landed on a roller skater which kept him going till fell down the stairs toward the basement with multiple crashes. The cat then came back only to slip on the banana from before causing him to fly outside the house and land inside a fence. The cat managed to free itself. The cat then noticed the faster it ran the higher it can jump which it used to reach a window that closed on him as the upper half of his body was inside the house and the other half was outside. Deku closed the window. He then brought a paddle and stood by the cat's rear as he smirked deviously. He then lifted the paddle as he readied himself to strike. He wouldn't dare, Kaibara said, this isn't going to happen, because this isn't really going to happen, not to a version of Bakugo of all people. He heard growls and saw steam rising. Bakugo then yelled, I will kill you shitty Deku if you dare to do that. You hear me, I swear to whatever god, devil, deity, or demon king that I will kill if you dare. Mina laughed as she pointed toward the screen, I guess that's it's going to happen whether you like it or not. Man, I never thought I'd see the day when Bakugo got a good spanking. The cat tried to look behind it in worry, but suddenly it jolted in pain and continued to do that as it cried tears with the strikes continuing. At the end of this, the cat's rear was glowing as it raised a white flag declaring its surrender. Finally, in the end, the kitten was drinking milk while the cat was begrudgingly massaging the mouse who held a very smug face of victory. Kaminari was now on the ground smashing his fist against it as everyone was laughing at Bakugo who was feeling that his heart was about to explode from anger. The boy took a deep breath and was about to yell at them, but his mother smacked him against the head, wow, that's the funniest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Maybe I should start spanking you myself. The boy looked at her, don't you dare you old hag. I'll kill myself before I'll allow that to happen. The boy and his mother continued to fight as everyone deadpanned at him but stopped when Discord said, this is by far not over. Get ready for another one. Bakugo's eyebrows twitched while Gyro said, I can't wait to see another one where Bakugo gets his ass handed to him. She got a yell for her comment, but Gyro flipped him off. The chaos being smiled at them as he said, brace yourselves because it begins right now. The scene showed the house of Deku from the outside before showing a scene from the inside. The green-haired mouse was currently having a nightmare of being smacked around by the cat when it woke up to knocking on its front door. The mouse walked to it and opened the door and looked around only to see a basket on the ground. He inspected it by poking it, but the basket poked back and ran inside its house. The green-haired mouse followed the basket as it scurried around his house and collided with a wall. The movement stopped as Deku managed to remove a cover from the object only to find a little mouse with white hair and a small horn with a note. The note simply read, Please take care of Uri. She's always hungry. Deku looked at the note and rubbed the back of his head as he tried to digest the information that seemed to confuse him greatly wondering how will he be able to take of it given that he can't take of himself. At the bottom of the note, he noticed a side note, Feed her lots of milk. Uri jumped in Izuku's lap, Daddy, that's me. That's so cool. The boy stroked Uri's hair as he smiled happily at her. He was thankful that Overhaul's shadow was removed from her. The mouse then looked at the little one who pointed to her mouth causing Deku to rub his chin thinking of a way to feed her, before gaining an idea and signaling for her to be quiet. He then went to the other entrance of his house and looked outside. He smiled when he saw the cat's bowl of milk with the cat itself out cold in sleep. He then signaled for the little mouse to come closer which was a mistake. 
The little one quickly ran toward the milk with no regard for its safety, but Deku managed to grab it before it went too deep. Hiri kept trying to go there, but Deku kept grabbing her before he gave up and hung her on a hook. He looked at her and shook his head telling her to be silent. He slowly tried to reach the milk, but Hiri ran toward it making him gasp in shock and fear. Izuku shook his head, this is like her when she sees an apple. I swear I saw her once trying to climb a balcony to get an apple from a tree. He looked at the girl who was blushing a little. Hiri rubbed her leg against the ground as she looked away and said, I really like apples. Izuku lifted her and rubbed his nose against hers, I know, but please try to be more careful. Hiri looked at her mamas who nodded their heads at her making nod her head, but Discord then gave her an apple making her drool in happiness and she began to stuff her mouth with it. Tanjiro then said, she really likes apples, huh? Kinda reminds me of Nezuko and her sleeping. Izuku replied, well, Hiri had a rough childhood, and apples were the only sweet thing fed to her so I can't blame her for loving them so much. Hiri currently was standing on the cat's nose as she prepared to jump into the milk, but she missed and ended up on the ledge losing her balance and grabbing the cat's whisker waking him up from the pain, it felt. Bakugo smirked, oh, you are going to get it now. You hear. He was silenced by a sledgehammer to the head from Momo who said, if you ever think about hurting Hiri, I'll make sure nobody finds your body. Do I make myself clear? The boy fearfully nodded his head as the girl walked back to her seat. Deku quickly ran and grabbed Uri jumping into the milk before the cat saw them. Kaken looked around wiping its face from the milk. Seeing no one, he shrugged before beginning to drink from the milk. Inside the bowl, both Deku and Uri watched as the cat's tongue passed by them, till the green mouse noticed that the cat managed to scope up Uri. The mouse quickly jumped from the milk bowl and looked at the cat. It then opened its mouth before grabbing Uri and running away from the cat who was shocked briefly before chasing them. The three ran with one chasing the other two. At first, Deku was holding Yuri, but when Yuri saw Kaken, she lifted Deku and ran with him to his house quickly shocking the older mouse. The little mouse made it to his house but smacked Deku against the wall as it entered the house. She then dragged him in as the cat smashed into the wall knocking it out cold. That Hugo howled like a madman in laughter, good one. She should do it some. This shit is really funny. He decided to ignore that he also smashed into a wall because Deku was the one who was also hurt. To him, this was all he needed to make his day extremely better. Hiri lowered her head in sadness, I'm sorry that I hurt you, Papa. Can you forgive me? Izuku hugged her as he said, of course, Pumpkin. I'll never be angry at you. The girl hugged back. Ibarra then said, you're such an amazing father, Izu. I wonder how will you be with our children when we get married and get blessed with some kids of our own. Itsuka, Tsuyu, and the other girls were by her boldness. But Izuku didn't care as his soul already evacuated his body due to embarrassment after he heard his mother muttering something about cute grandbabies from Izuku and his girlfriends when the time comes. Didn't his mother know that he was doing this just to help Uri? He swears that his mother will kill him with her way of thinking. No way that the girls were really interested in him. Discord looked at him and rubbed his head, is every version of myself this dense? I mean most of the other worlds it was the girl that initiated the action. The scene now changed as Izuku was using multiple straws to make a bridge to the milk and help her drink from it. The cat noticed the straw bridge enter its milk and heard drinking noises coming from the milk. The cat then smirked evilly as it grabbed the straw and began to suck on it causing the little mouse to be sucked inside of it and making Deku scream in horror as he followed the little one stopping it from being eaten by the cat at the last moment. The green mouse grabbed the straw which held her and blew in it sending the younger mouse to the house as he ran after it. But Kaken caught up and moved the entrance to the house to the side causing the green mouse to hit the wall and the cat caught him. Bondo asked, can he really do that? Seems a little bit impossible. Discord replied, you have a glue dispenser for a head, and your best friend has a bubble thought for a head, and that's bothering you. No one argued after that. Hiri then exited the hole with a hammer and struck the cat's tail causing it to jolt in pain. The cat jumped howling in agony as Deku grabbed the little one and ran away with the cat giving chase. The three ran till Deku passed the milk bowl and put his hand in a stop sign. Everyone stopped as Uri drank from the milk and spat at a Kaken who was blinded giving the two mice enough time to run away from him into the cabinet inside the kitchen. The cat followed them and began to try and pry open the cabinet to get them. Inside the cabinet, the green-haired mouse made a plan when opened a can of shoe polish. On the outside, the cat brought a pan and readied himself to attack as a small black figure appeared greeting him. How are you doing today, Mr. Kaken? Everyone was confused as Achako asked, Deku, why do you sound like someone from New Orleans? The boy simply shrugged not understanding what he was doing. Izuku said, well, it seems that the plan is working, so points for creativity, I think. Now let's see what also I'm going to do because I'm sure that it's going to be good. The others nodded their heads as Izuku was holding back his laughter from this small scene. The black figure then said, hurry child, we need to go. Damn, children these days. The small figure followed the older one, but the cat saw through the trick and followed them only to be met with a pan to the face throwing it back. Deku ran toward it and grabbed its tongue. He then forced the cat to bite its own tongue which made it cry out in pain. The mouse ran away as the cat gave chase. Hiri came and Deku passed by her giving her a frying pan with the intent of attacking the cat. Izuku then said, I don't know why, but I have a bad feeling about this and I'm sure that this is going to somehow backfire right back at me. The girls comforted him. 
that Hugo simply said, Well, Deku, you should already know by now that you win some, you lose some. I thought life taught you this. That Hugo was then pelted with different objects due to his boldness acting like he wasn't the one who made Izuku's life a living hell. The chase began, but when Deku passed by Yuri, she smacked him with the pan flattening him to the ground, but he jumped back and ran. This happened a couple of times before Deku stopped her with a stern face as the cat stood behind him. Deku then pointed at Kakan and Yuri swung the pan right into his face leaving an imprint of the pan on his face as the two mice made their escape. The two then went under the carpet as Kakon grabbed a glass bottle and made it to the other end of the carpet. Mina frowned as she said, Oh no, he's going to grab Yuri. I hope that he doesn't hurt her. Discord then said, Then you won't like what's going to happen next. Kakan then grabbed Deku and put him in the bottle. Yuri was left alone and ran away. The cat then put the bottle down and sealed it with a couple of books giving Yuri chase. Once the little mouse exited the carpet, she brought a pie and put it in the cat's face which he collided with. The mouse then ran away from the cat for a while before stopping in front of the milk. Kendo then said, Wow, they weren't kidding that she was always hungry. The cat then grabbed her in his fists, but when he opened it, he saw nothing. He then felt a mass moving across his body till it reached his tail. The cat grabbed it and aimed a gun at his tail. He then shot it, but his tail was injured making him cry out in pain. He then chased her with a fly swatter in his hand and managed to corner her. He lifted the swatter and prepared to strike the little mouse who attempted to protect herself. Everyone gave Bakugo a dirty look as the boy said, Oh, so I'm the one giving spanked, it's all fine and dandy. Someone else gets spanked and suddenly I'm worse than AFO. Achako then grabbed his shoulder and began to squeeze it hard. For every single moment of pain, that version of you inflict on Eri, I'll tighten my grip and make sure you suffer. Bakugo looked at her astonished as he said, Hey, you can't hold me accountable for what other shitty versions of myself do. That isn't fair and isn't heroic at all. The girl's deadpan at him, consider this payment for all the pain you put Zuku through. The cat then hit Uri. Deku, who was still trapped, saw this and went mad with rage. He managed to break the glass and go to check on the little mouse. He saw that she was in extreme pain. He looked at Kakin with an angry look as the cat took a step back hiding the swatter, but all this was too late. Deku took a deep breath and let out a mighty roar causing the cat to go yellow from fear. The girls began to cheer Izuku, go and beat that child abuser, Deku. Kick his ass. The cat tried to run away, but the mouse caught him and gave him a beating of a lifetime. In the end, Deku was standing behind the cat with a mallet as it meekly feed her milk fearful of what would happen to it should he cross the mouse once more. Sato then said, Wow, who knew that Midoriya could go savage? Could he even be angry? It seems a little bit impossible. I mean he's the nicest guy ever. Discord shook his head, just because he's happy doesn't mean he isn't angry. We're just that good at hiding our emotions. Achako then asked, So that means Deku isn't the happy guy he pretends to be. Why doesn't he tell anyone? We're his friends. Members of the self-proclaimed Deku squad nodded their heads, but Discord shook his head saying, because most versions of ourselves already accepted that we need to keep other people happy and our happiness comes second. In addition, we mostly use that anger as a motivator to become better heroes. Discord ignored the shocked looks, let's move on. We have a small scene before we end this funny intermission because I sense the next one is going to be a heavy one. The scene shifted inside a pool store as Kakin was seen playing pool and managed to land a hit and a ball entered a hole which led it to cause many noises making up a mouse. The ball then hit the mouse causing it to grumble as it went to confront the source. The mouse exited a hole in the pool table. It looked around for a moment and saw nobody. Once it turned back, the cat was waiting for it causing it to run away from it. The cat then used the pool stick to hit the white ball and sent it after Deku. The mouse tried to jump into one of the holes, but the white ball stopped it sending the mouse back to the cat. The mouse reached the cat who blew wind in its face sending it tumbling down to the middle of the table. The cat then sent a row of balls which trampled the mouse while he laughed at it. The balls rebounded and returned toward the mouse which tried to run away from it, but it was caught and the cat used it as the new head of his pool. Izuku chuckled a little, well, it seems that I'm the one who's going to be in pain this time around. Bakugo laughed a little enjoying the chuckles he is hearing, the table's turn right now. This is fun. He was silenced by a slip to the head by his mother. The cat then used it to hit an eight ball. The mouse was dizzy as the ball came back and branded it with the number 8 on its rear after the cat forced it to do tricks. The mouse was enraged and walked up to the blonde cat. It grabbed its pool stick bending it back and sending it into his face which made him jolt in pain. The mouse ran away as the cat threw an 8 ball toward him, but the mouse ducked down causing the ball to hit the edge of the table and returned to the cat deforming its face and caving it in. Sierra rolled on his back, so much for Midoriya suffering now. It seems that your turn and suffering returned to you Bekugo. Try not to lose your head because it seems you're about to fall over. Izuku then tried to calm the boy down, calm down, Kakin. I mean that it's not as bad as it looks. You have to admit that this is a little bit funny. Bakugo glared at him but said nothing because he only wanted to move on from this disgusting world or universe or whatever they wanted to call it. The cat then grabbed two balls and sent them toward the mouse, but he countered by using a pool stick to return them to the sender. In the end, the cat had new eyes. He then shook his head and threw a new ball that the mouse countered once more, but the cat used a baseball glove to catch it. The ball made a hole through its hand. 
the cat threw another, but the mouse hit it so hard it went flying as the cat attempted to catch it. Bakugo sighed, something extremely stupid is going to happen to me. Discord nodded his head causing the boy to sigh and watch the scene as he grumbled under his breath. Kendo leaned toward Izuku, do you think that he'll blow up when this is over? It seems that he's about to have an aneurysm from the amount of anger he's experiencing right now. The boy rubbed his head, I don't know, but we can't be sure. I mean he gets angry for the most ridiculous of things so I won't put it past him to have one right now. Sayu added, well, either way, we're going to have a funny scene on both sides of the show. The four began to laugh as Iri chuckled a little at their words. The cat began to quickly follow the ball. It moved between tables and tried its hardest to catch it. It managed to do that, but the force threw the cat back till it landed inside a vending soda vending machine which began to malfunction due to the collision. The machine then began to throw out soda cans and simple spits, till it began to choke on something and threw out Kakin with a metal cap on his head positioned like a soda can. Kamakiri laughed like a madman, man, this is so hilarious. This is gold material. I can't imagine something like this happening to anyone and him being able to show his face to people another time. Shota punched him making him grumble. Everyone continued to laugh as the scene suddenly turned dark with Toru whining, hey, what's happening? We wanted to see more of Bakugo getting his ass handed to him royally. Bakugo then shouted from the side, shut it, invisible bitch. I'm going to kill you all today. Discord laughed a little, this was priceless, but we need to move on to the other worlds, so that's enough of this one. The 13th universe. Mina pouted and crossed her arms, come on dude, just let us finish this episode. We were about to get into the good stuff and see the cat having its ass handed to it with the free benefit of having Bakugo foaming at the mouth while having a heart attack simultaneously. The blonde bomber was being held back by Kirishima, who desperately tried to prevent murder. Discord shook his head, because I said so. Fun time is over. Now, we go back to the real juicy stuff. Momo then asked, fun time. I thought this entire thing is supposed to be fun time but at the expense of Zuzu. The green-haired boy slumped forward in depression while his counterpart laughed uproariously. This was not going as planned. The boy was supposed right now to be training to become a hero not being transformed into a universal laughing stock by himself no less. Discord wiped a tear from his eye, well, to be clear. I like every couple of worlds to make a sort of recess so to speak. So you can all rest a bit and decompress because some shit that you're going to see is really disturbing and unsettling more than what you saw especially if it's a villain Izuku because most of them are brutal and doesn't know what the word mercy means so much. They make AFO look like a saint. Everyone was taken aback by this statement because Izuku seemed so nice, it was hard to imagine him as a bloodthirsty villain. Nezu asked, so in short, what you are saying is that the world we saw was like a small commercial before we returned to the actual footage and we might see it again when you deem it. Discord nodded his head as Nezu smiled evilly, I can't wait to see more of that world. It just shows how strong mice and rats are. He then began to laugh like a crazy person. Discord looked at everyone and asked, any more questions before I move on to embarrass Minimi some more? Shoto raised his hand and Discord wondered what he had to say. The boy coughed. Don't you want to know our opinion regarding this world? I mean you did the same thing for the eleven other worlds. Discord grabbed the boy's cheeks and squelched and looked at him with a deadpan look. A look that said he should already know the answer. Shoto, listen to me carefully. The boy nodded his head. This world is nothing but shits and giggles. What kind of other opinion will I hear other than it's funny and hilarious? I'd be wasting time hearing opinions out. He then pushed the boy's face away, teleported Izuku to the front, and said with an all-might laugh, You're in luck, Izuku. You got to spin the wheel this time. Good luck. Izuku gulped as he began to spin the wheel and it began to change scenes till finally landed on one title that caused some boys to laugh and Izuku to glow red from embarrassment. Catwoman. Izuku then muttered under his breath as he sat beside Tusuyu and Ibarra with Itsuka sitting in his lap and Iri napping in Ibarra's vines. This couldn't get any worse than that, can it? The look on his counterpart's face made him realize that it can become worse than this. He really hated this place. Izuku frowned, I have a feeling telling me that I will be embarrassed beyond belief in this world. Itsuka rubbed his cheek, if it makes feel any better Izu, the others and I will be beside you the entire time and make you feel better. She pecked him on the nose as he looked away with a small blush. Before the boy can say anything, if it helps you feels any better, you won't be the only person getting embarrassed here. The scene began to change and flicker till it landed on the top of Japan's National Museum, well, this is going to be fun. Izuku gulped hoping it isn't what he thought it is. The weather was a little bit windy, but someone managed to land gracefully on the top of the museum. The figure was dressed in a skin-tight black suit which showed off its beautiful figure. The figure had a mask on its face with cat ears on the top. The figure also had a belt hanging from its backside like a tail and another one wrapped around its waist with many compartments on it. This was a new up and rising villain known as Catwoman. While villain would be too much of a generous word for her given that she only steals stuff. People mainly compare her to gentle criminal who was technically a villain, but never did anything than steal or prank the occasional hero. This though didn't stop heroes from tailing and failing at catching her. Even the number one hero endeavor failed and almost spent the night out of his house when the feline villainous gave him a peck on his nose making his wife boil in anger. The flame hero looked at Izuku, I'll boil that version of you alive when I manage to catch her. 
He was cut off by Izuku. Well, you don't know it's me. I mean this could be a world where I rehabilitate a criminal like I usually do. The flame hero didn't believe him, but his wife seemed to have the time of her life as she was laughing so hard, she fell over. Ray retorted, Please, Inji, this is supposed to be fun. Lighten up. The man looked at her with a frown, I mean you are an old man. You should be happy a girl even looked at you, let alone kissed you on the cheek. The room was filled with silence at the savage burn Shoto's mom just made. Tanjiro winced, oh, that must have hurt his pride. He began to remember the times he told Zenitsu that he should be happy that he even agreed to let him come near Nezuko, let marry her. I think I should apologize to Zenitsu when I go back. Kano patted him on the head. The girl then looked through the glass on the top of the museum and smiled. Cameras are done with EMP. The guards were sent phony schedules to make sure that they don't show up. She then used her fingernails to make a huge opening in the glass for her to fit in. The woman then tied a rope around her waist and climbed down into the museum. She pulled out a small powder and puffed it, revealing lasers for motion sensors. The woman giggles beginning to gracefully dodge the lasers to make it to her goal which was a necklace that was said to have been made from the high-end period. When she saw it in the news, she knew she has to have it. Mirio hummed a little, I suspect that she has some sort of quirk that tends her to steal shiny stuff. Mr. Compress then added, perhaps that version of the boy has a quirk similar to mine. Most of my stealing gags were made because I couldn't control myself and I would steal them without feeling. Mirio then said, but still with her skills, she could be a hero. Maybe that version of myself can save her and help her become a hero. He was cut off by a snort from Discord, is there something wrong with what I said? The blonde boy wasn't bothered, but something felt not right here. Discord nodded his head and answered him, this version of you had OFA with the side effects. You tell what's wrong. The boy's face fell as he understood the implications while Night Eye who was sitting nearby cringed at the results of Mirio taking the quirk. Izuku then protested, why do you insist that I'm her? Maybe, it's Momo. I mean they have the same body structure. This made everyone look at him as Tanjiro smirked and decided to tease him. Tanjiro said, and how do you know that Midoriya-san? Were you looking at her all the time? Izuku looked at the boy and yelled, betrayal this caused Discord to have memories of his first sports festival and a thought echoed through his head, maybe, I should wake Master up. He did say to do that if I did something worthwhile. He shrugged, perhaps in the next few worlds, I'll wake him. Kano smiled and decided to take his lead, Midoriya-san, you picking quite several ladies, you should be ready to take all of your children equally. The boy fainted much to everyone's amusement. Momo meanwhile blushed covering her face, Zuzu has been checking me out. The woman kept dodging gracefully till she reached the vault and using some advanced gizmo managed to crack it open and steal the necklace before returning to the roof where she jumped quickly to the side. Oh if it isn't the handsome dynamite. The man in question looked at her like a scorned lover who has been cheated on. Are you sad because I tangled with Ingenium last week? She winked at him. I promise for now on, I'll be a good girl and fight you alone. She dashed to him. The hero threw an explosion, but the woman jumped above kicking him in the face and causing him to fall on his rear, you bitch. He then jumped up and attempted to attack her again, but she took a whip and wrapped it around a pipe as Bakugo approached her. Mina then said, just watch and learn ladies about how you tame a Bakugo. She was bouncing in her place, this version of Izu Babe is really a badass woman. I bet he's going to give him a beatdown of a lifetime. I can't wait to see what happens next. Bakugo screamed, there's no way a woman in a leather tight suit is going to beat me. I'm going to kick her ass. Just you watch and see. No one believed him. Everyone wanted to see how the beatdown went, and how many tricks can this version of Izuku pull up his sleeve. Izuku then said, I find it hard to believe that Bakugo will be. He was stopped by Tsuyu who cupped his cheeks, Izukun, don't think less of yourself. You're plenty strong on your own. You can defeat him. The boy nodded his head as the girl shoot out her tongue into his mouth and pulled him over for a kiss. The boy was a blushing mess when this moment finished. The woman then pulled herself up as Bakugo slammed into an AC system, my, my, are you hurt dear? Do you want me to kiss your boo-boos away? The man looked at her murderously. He then lifted his hands and put his weapons in her face, but she merely sighed as she crossed the distance making her claws pop out and cut the weapons into pieces surprising the hero. She then threw something at him. It was a foam pellet that exploded upon contact with the man trapping him inside. He couldn't produce explosions anymore which meant that he was trapped. The woman walked up to him and slapped his cheek, what do I ever do with you? She then pulled out a small piece of paper that had the names Catwoman and Dynamite on it. She crossed something on her side of the page, a new victory for me. This makes us at 100 wins for me and zero for you. She began to giggle. The trapped hero then yelled, I'll kill you, bitch. You'll hear me. He then began to struggle. When I get out of this shitty trap, I swear I'm going to kill, consequences be damned. The lady continued to laugh as she approached the trapped man. The woman traced a hand on his face and said, All that effort though deserves a reward. Izuku then said, Please don't let it be what I think it is. Please don't let it be what I think it is. Shoto then asked, What are talking about Midoriya? And why do you seem nervous? Is it because I'm about to prove that you're All Might's secret love child? Izuku looked at his friend with an exasperated look. They had this discussion around a million times. Why was he so insistent that he was All Might's love child? If anything, Ayama would fit the profile. Izuku shook his head, No, but I feel that this version of myself will threaten my life right now. 
The lady then grabbed his face and pulled him into a kiss. It lasted a few moments before she let go. The hero looked at her in shock. He then yelled, You filthy SKAMK. This was my first kiss. I was saving it for someone special. Not gutter trash like you. The cat lady giggled, well if helps feel any better. This was my first kiss too. She then jumped off the side of the building. Goodbye until we see each other again, my hero. It was only moments later that Aizawa arrived on the scene and freed his student. C managed to outsmart you again. The boy didn't say anything but only glared at the ground. Look, I can always ask someone else to help you. This villain isn't like anything we dealt with. Izuku ducked as Bakugo charged him yelling, Deku, you bitch. I want to kill you on behalf of that version of yourself. How dare that version of myself steal my first kiss. I'm sending you to hell personally. I won't allow this one to slide. He jumped toward Izuku as a portal opened in front of his face and another behind him. He then began to go through a cycle of entering one portal and exiting the other only to enter the first one again and so on. Everyone else was laughing at the boy for both reasons. It was funny. Shoto then said, You're right, mom. This is funny. At least when I'm not the one that has to endure it. Back Hugo cut him off. No, I said that I'll bring her in and that means I'll bring her in. He then blasted away from there as the nighttime hero shook his head. Well, at least it ended better than when Shoto tried to arrest her. The boy had one blind eye now after she scratched his right eye. In an apartment, Catwoman slipped inside. She walked to her room before depositing her latest heist. It was successful, and tonight she met her dear Dynamite. She then removed her mask and goggles revealing long following black hair with green highlights and emerald green eyes. The girl known as Izumi Midoriya smiled. This necklace now is with her rightful owner which is me. The girl put it on a huge stash of loot she had before going to the bathroom to have a shower. Izuku looked at the ground in embarrassment. His face was glowing red. The boys all of them were laughing at him, but Kendo came to the rescue, what are you clowns laughing at? Manga made the unwise choice of answering her, well, he's a girl. The girl crossed her arms under her chest, really now. And what's so funny about that? What's so funny about being a girl? Tell me, Manga. The boy looked at her and gulped as danger signs appear from his thought bubble. He then felt every girl stare at him wanting him to talk. He then replied, I'm dumb, but not that dumb. I rest my case. She then slapped Monoma on the back, but he's that dumb. Take it away, Monoma. The boy looked at him betrayed. He saw every girl wanting him to talk so they can beat him. Girls are awesome. I have no idea why one wouldn't like to be one. I mean you do carry babies for months and this proves your strength. The girls nodded their heads with approval as the boy slumped down avoiding his death. The next day came and Izumi went to her work. She sat in her office and began to work on her quirk analysis of Catwoman. She internally chuckled at this. She was throwing her colleagues in loops and no one would be able to discover it. After all, who would suspect the quirkless innocent girl to be a villain? They wouldn't be able to believe that some quirkless girl with some training, tinkering skills, and a class of acrobatics managed to make fun of Hero's even endeavor. She took a special pleasure when she took out Frost's right eye. The idiot was willing to endanger an entire orphanage to catch a flame villain with his ice even though the villain's fire was much stronger than his ice. She managed to defeat the villain and the hero. In simple words, she hated him. There was nothing else to be added. Shoto's eyes were wide hearing what he would have done should he continued not using his flames. His mother patted him on the back. Don't worry about that, sweetie. You aren't him. A loud voice rang across the room, Deku, where are those notes on that cat bitch? A girl then pretended to shiver in fear. The girl then pretended to walk with shaky steps to him. A girl carefully lifted the notes before the hero snatched the notes, for the love of God, Izumi. Grow up. He then crossed his arms, we aren't kids anymore. I'm not going to hit you. The girl rubbed her shoulders, I know, but I can't help it. The girl looked at him with a smile, I don't know what to do in front of you. You're so awesome. I hope that my notes can help you. The hero scoffed, I doubt it. He didn't help me the hundred last time. The girl cut him off, you aren't giving me enough details or videos or anything to work with. The man then yelled, you're the quirk genius. Figure it out. The girl replied, this isn't some kind of challenge. I need data. Aizawa stood up, I can smell the failure. He looked at Bakugo who cooled down, how could she work at your own agency and no one knows about it. This is one of the most ridiculous things that I ever saw. He sat down and began to draw circles in the ground. Bakugo retorted, how should I know? He then pointed at Izuku, have you seen him before he got All Might's quirk? He was a walking string bean. And he then looked at Izuku, I don't care how, but I'm going to destroy you when this is over. He began to growl like a caged animal. Discord patted the blonde on the head, believe that we were ten times as dangerous as you were. The blonde boy looked at him, we just didn't act on our impulses to ruin. He was silenced when a foot met his mouth and Izuku growled, not another word. This stays between us and only us. Everyone was intrigued by this. Only a few understood what Discord meant. AFO was now interested in getting his hands on those notebooks to destroy society. Izumi pouted and looked away as Bakugo took the papers from her. Give those and they better work this time around or you're fired. He heard a scoff come from the girl. You wouldn't dare do that. The man felt his eyebrow twitch. I'm your best quirk analyst. The girl put her hand on her hip and flicked him on the nose. You can't survive a day without me. The man was about to walk away, but Izumi grabbed his hand. Hey, Kakan. 
I was thinking that maybe today we can go have lunch too. The man freed his hand from her, not today, Izumi. And forget about it, I will never go out with you. The girl's face fell as he walked away. She then quietly said, oh, okay. She then walked away wiping a stray tear. I guess the only relationship we'll have is your Batman to my Catwoman. The girls looked heartbroken at the girl version of Midoriya. They then directed their attention to Bakugo. The boy was then pelleted with rotten tomatoes. Mina then yelled, how dare you break her heart like that. She took another tomato and chucked it at him causing the boy to duck it under the boy. It takes a lot of effort to tell a boy we love our feelings. The boy threw a blob of acid at the boy who ducked. The boy replied, hey, you can't just force someone to accept your feelings. It will only hurt you more in the long run. The girl seemed to accept this. Toru then said, you're lucky. She then looked at all the boys, you're all lucky. The boys all gulped a little. In his office, Katsuki looks at a picture of his childhood with Izumi hugging him. The boy remembered their promises to become a hero couple, get married, and form a family. But all this went to flames. When his quirk came, he pushed her away seeing her weaker than him. Over time, he didn't see her as his equal. He began to see himself as Superman and Izumi as Lois Lane. He kept pushing her away to protect her from the world of heroes. He didn't have the courage of Superman to have her involved in his world. Beck Hugo then says, I'm sorry, Izumi, but I'm not good enough. He looked and began to scroll through his phone. Maybe, someday, you'll find someone else that can fill that void I left. The girls then began to swoon at him with Mina saying, That's so romantic, Beck Hugo. The boy sweat dropped with the rest of the men, man, they have some serious swing moods. Izuku then said, well, I always say that Kekin is a big softy under all that anger of his. He then looked at Mitsuki, he's just all anti. You just need to pile the layers of anger off. Bakugo looked at him and growled, why the hell are calling soft, Deku. The boy blasted a small explosion, I'm going to smoke your ass. The boy was then smacked by his mother. The woman then said, Katsuki, you once cried because of the movie Bambi for six hours straight, and that was six weeks ago when you came to visit me. The boy looked at her with a betrayed look, oh, don't look at me like that. We both know that true as it gets. You have a soft heart, but that's why you're my little baby boy. She then hugged him making the boy grumble. Back with Izumi, she walked to her seat. She sat down with a frown evident on her face, Mini. She hated that Katsuki always shot down her attempts to go on a date with her. She hoped that after he became a hero, he got rid of that inferiority complex wrapped tight inside a superiority complex and that he began to at least see her as a romantic partner. The girls frowned a little as Mina said, I really hope that this version of Izubabe finds happiness. She rubbed her hands together, it is really hard to see a girl having her heartbreak. Izuku whistled, well, at least he's doing it for a good reason, and he's certainly better than other people I remember from Y old school. Sui so pinched him, did they use to put fake lover letters in your locker? The boy laughed a little, but Ibarra pinched his other cheek. Yeah, they used to do that. There were many buckets of water in my past. A girl had a hard life already from the get-go. Being quirkless gave her a death sentence. Her childhood was never endless torture with Katsuki helping her, because his mother put a foot down when one day, she saw him bullying her. After that came puberty, boys began to flock around her thinking that she was going to go out with them because they had strong quirks. After that the war, her dear mother died when that son of a bitch Shoto Todoroki fought an ice villain and kept giving him ammo. Her mom was frozen solid, and when he was confronted, his only reply was, I had everything under control, and I'll train better to gain control over my ice. Three weeks later, she had the pleasure of blowing his brother's brains out. Taya cringed, why was I the one killed? He's the one that killed her mother. The boy looked at Izuku, why come you killed me and not him? It isn't fair. Izuku replied, perhaps I wanted him to suffer. The burnt man raised an eyebrow, I mean that version of myself saw my mother die because of Shoto, and clearly, he wanted to save you, so I might have taken you out to force him to feel the same pain I felt. Taya hummed a little, your answer is accepted. He then lowered his hand, I won't make you into beacon. The green-haired boy had all his hair stand on its end. Shoto on the other hand was just staring with a question in his mind, would I truly become like this? Someone who lets other people die just to spite my father. He shook his head, but then felt a hand on his shoulder. He looked and saw his father, that's not you, Shoto. You're going to be an amazing hero one day. He then hugged the confused boy who hugged him back. Ray could only smile at this. I wish our family was like this from the beginning. She then looked at the screen and wondered, I wonder if there's a world where his obsession with All Might didn't ruin our family, and we lived a happy life together. The girl after all those tragedies felt something break inside of her. One night when she was about to get assaulted, she decided that she didn't want to be Lois Lane anymore. She wasn't a damsel in distress that Superman needed to save her. That night, a man left the world and a new person was born. That night Izumi Midoriya came out of the alleyway covered in blood with a razor in her hand. She decided that if the world won't give her what she wanted, she'll take it for herself. She deserves happiness. Everyone else can go screw themselves. She had a few goals that she needed to obtain, but first, she trained herself. Oh, my dear good, all the girls shouted. They hated the idea. They shook their heads getting rid of it. Izuku frowned, he really hated scumbags who targeted defenseless people. Needless to say, people didn't like the implications of this. It was truly hard to hear that. It wasn't hard to tell that Izumi have a mental breakdown somewhere along the point. It seems that she had suffering that lasted her for a lifetime. 
It was sad that heroes couldn't reach her in time. Nezu shook his head, she would have made an amazing hero. Her ability to trick, sneak, and overall go from one place to the other unnoticed would have made her another eraser head. All Might then said, look at the bright side, at least her crimes are mostly focused on stealing stuff. He laughed a little, at least, she isn't the second coming of UFO. Izumi looked to her side and saw her co-workers, or more appropriately her underlings whispering among each other about her rejection for what could be a hundred times. She growled under her breath, what are you morons whispering about? She then eyed them all, if you have something to say, say it to my face. Not when my back is turned to you. One of the more confident ones walked to her, yeah, we were talking about how you still try. He was cut off by a punch to the jaw sending him flying and most probably unconscious. She looked at the rest of the stunned crowd, any more of you dipshits want to make more witty remarks. They all slowly shook their head, great get back to your fucking job before I steam you. All of them then scurried away like roaches as the girl sat down in her seat and began to do her work on Catwoman to help Kakin to apprehend her and bring her to justice. She then heard the door of the quirk analysis department open. She looked up and saw one of the unspeakable four in her walk straight up to her. Achako then said, why am I one of the unspeakable four? Why am I a bad person in this to Deku? Discord looked at her, and she knew that he had something to say, and by all means it wasn't something pretty. He had a very conflicted look on his face that said I'm not sure if I should tell her or not which made her very worried. Discord then spoke, you see not every version of yourself is a good version. I mean one of them dated Izuku only to attract Bakugo's attention when she dumps Izuku so he can take her as his woman. There are a lot of shitty versions of you out there. The girl had a hollow look in her eyes, I want to kill that bitch, and hang her skin as pelt on my front door. She also had tears running from her eyes. She then felt someone hug her. She looked and saw Izuku and Iri hugging her. The boy then said, that version of you isn't you, so don't blame yourself. The girl beamed in happiness, but her romantic moment was taken away from her by Ibarra who stuck out her tongue when nobody was looking as she took Izuku away from her. The gravity girl felt a vain throb on her forehead, holy Mary wants like that, then two can play this game. Izuku didn't know why, but he felt he was stuck in some sort of crossfire as the three girls he was with hugged him tighter than before. Achako walked up to her and said, Hey, Izumi, who's the office work here? Although she was smiling, she can tell Achako was laughing at her. How she wished she can rip that smile before feeding it to cats in the alleyways. The reason for the war between them is Bekugo. The bitch is trying to steal her future husband in broad daylight. Although they were close friends at the beginning of UA and Izumi helped win the sports festival in her first year. Everything went to hell when Achako told her that she was going to date Bakugo after she told the gravity girl how much she loved him. She felt betrayed because, after that point, Achako began subtly mocking her for her quirklessness and spreading unflattering rumors about her. Note to self, destroy Achako's family business, and steal all the money they have to make them piss poor. Achako then jumped, that bitch, everyone assumed she was talking about Izuku's counterpart, but she carried on, how dare she put Izumi through so much torture and for what Bakugo. She looked at the boy, I've seen villains with better personalities than him. The boy jumped up offended, hey, I'm not that bad you know. Everyone ignored him causing him to deflate and draw circles in the ground. This was his lowest moment ever, but on the bright side, he saw a world where two girls were fighting over him. Izuku chuckled a lit. He never expected in a million years a world where he and Achako would be enemies. She was his first friend and best friend for that after all. The multiverse is weird. The greenette forced a smile on her face, as good as your family's business. Silent exclaims of shock could be heard from the entire office and Izumi took a small pleasure in the vein on Achako's head. Who knew for such a cutesy face, she was a bitch through and through. Yuraka kept her smile though it was strained by the many veins popping on her forehead. At least it's much better than your love life, that's for sure. The silent exclaims of shock became loud before Izumi looked at them and silenced them with a glare. Achako huffed, man, that version of myself is a true bitch. I would never be like that under any circumstances. The girl remembered what Discord told her, at least, I hope so. Discord replied laughing, never say never. Bakugo then yelled from his office, what the fuck are you doing, round face. The brunette looked at the man, we have an important meeting to attend to. Stop wasting time. You can talk with Izumi when we're finished. The brown-haired woman smirked walking to the man. If looks can kill, Achako should have become a crime scene right now from Izumi's glare. The girl slumped into her seat once again. At times like these, she wished that Ida was still around. He was her best friend. She met him after she accidentally tripped on the stairs on her way to class 1 degrees Celsius when he caught her. From there, he introduced her to the other members of 1A. At some point, she even imagined starting a relationship with him given how earnest he seemed. She knew he needed someone to help him loosen up. He seemed like a great person, but he took things way too seriously, but Stain happened and all of that died in its tracks. Ida was a blushing mess right now. Knowing that a female version of your friend at some point entertained the idea of having a relationship with you was embarrassing enough. Having your own brother teasing you about it was even more embarrassing. Shoto found it a little bit amusing, but then said, wait a minute. Everyone looked at him, does that mean Ada dies when he went after Stain? A heavy silence occurred as Discord replied, yes, he died. Without Izuku, there was no way anyone could have found Ida and stopped Stain from killing him. 
Viscord clapped his hands. Anyway back to the world, we might see Stain and his crazy delusions soon enough. Ida merely nodded his head slowly. At night, Izumi stood on a rooftop watching her next target, the Todoroki household. She heard that the flame hero's wife had a particular set of beautiful earrings, so she decided to relieve her of them. It was for the greater good. She deserved happiness. She jumped down and began her prowl for the beautiful earrings. Endeavor looked at Izuku who was whistling innocently. The man then said, I guess that version of me is about to roast a particularly troublesome cat. Izuku gulped a little, I really hope not. Did he disagree with that version's actions? Sure, 100%. Did they mean that she had to die a horrible death? No, far from it. What she really needs is serious help. Discord clapped his hands, all right, enough of this. Let's move on somewhere else. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if Deku met his multiple versions. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout out to Demon Heart 12 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Deku Fanfix if for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys on part 4.